good evening, good night, depending on where you are joining us from today. How are you all, like, how are you all doing today? We're still expecting more people to join us, okay? Uh, but we'll start. We like to keep the time, okay? So we'll start the session as usual, all right? So um, happy weekend. How's the weekend been for you, okay? I would like you to just use a word. Okay, um, with just one word, classify how your weekend has been so far. Okay, so let's use the chat. We're going to use the chat room to, you know, to have a conversation, basically, okay, for this session to be. So let's use the chat um, just to ensure that everyone is, you know, everyone is muted and we are you know, keeping everything at the same pace. Okay, so how has your weekend been, guys? How has your weekend been so far? All right. Mine is literally just started. This is just one o'clock where we are, where I am at the moment. So, well, another exciting thing about the weekend is I get to speak to you guys today. I think that's something I usually look, I look out for. Okay, so thanks a lot for taking our time to attend today's session. All right. So Uyayi Uyebi is saying fabulous. Okay, it's three p.m. and it's great. Okay, fantastic. Now I want to know where you're joining from, Yvonne. Okay, amazing. All right, awesome. I love that. I love this guys. See, guys, I want you guys, I want you guys to know something. Yeah. It's a free session. Okay. And most people will just want to sit back, relax, and don't interact. Okay. But what I want to what I want from you today is I want you guys to interact with me. Okay. Because that's the, literally the best way for you to learn. I won't lie to you. That's the best way for you to learn, for you to ask questions, for you to interact, interact, you know, and you know, just make it more lively. That's the key thing that you need to do today, okay? So we're, not, we're going to do something technical, no doubt about that. We're going to be dealing with data. And let me tell you something today, guys. I, I think I have an obsession, okay? I want to, I'm only telling the guys on the call today, just you guys, you guys should know about it. But I think I'm obsessed with data. I love data so much. Anything that has to do with data counts me in. And, you know, another interesting thing about it, okay, for me is being able to pass across this information to people. So no, that's, that's something that most people can't do, and I find pleasure in doing it, all right? So this is a technical, quite a number, quite a technical topic to talk about today, all right? But guess what? I specialize in making technical things non-technical. And the best way for you to understand better is for you to interact. That's literally the whole thing, all right? So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today, Okay. So um, everybody is doing amazing, you know, fantastic, fabulous, okay. Uh, I would like to know where you guys are joining from also, okay. So I'm joining from Alberta, okay. I can see Yvonne is from Ontario. It's good to have you here, Yvonne. Um, let me see, someone from Abuja, okay, fantastic. Nigeria, we have in Nigeria, we have guys in Canada currently on the call. But I would like to know where you guys are joining from, okay. What location, what's your current location? All right, put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Let's see. Put it in the chat. Okay. Let's interact with one another. All right. All right. So today's session is going to be very, very interesting. All the way from South Africa. Oh, it's good to have you here. We have someone from Usara from Maryland, USA. Fantastic. Good to have you here. Charity from Abuja. Caleb from Niger Abuja, Nigeria. Lagos. It's good to have you guys on board. I won't lie. I get excited when I get to see quite a number of professionals across the world, okay? It's very good. And that's another beauty of virtual training sessions anyways. All right. So we're going to be talking about something very interesting today, okay? We're going to be talking about unstructured data into structured data, image processing using Python, all right? Unstructured data into structured data. Okay, very interesting. Now, this is what makes data science very interesting because you get to see the impact of your work real time. Not no, not not in the future. You get to work with something and you're seeing the impact of what you're doing real time. And that's exactly what we're going to explore in today's session. Okay, Nigeria, UK, let's go. <laughs> All right, no problem. I don't know you're in the UK, Nigeria, UK. If you're in Peckham, it doesn't even matter. Will is she? It doesn't matter. Okay, you're fine. You're on board. Okay. Anyways, so um, just for you know, for, for the sake of people that are joining us for the first time, I usually like to do an introduction. Okay, and um, the introduction is very straightforward. Just to tell you about what we do at Analytics and what we stand for. 
what we want to achieve, what our goal, our vision, our mission, all right, is. So the goal for us is to get more Africans interested. That's the first thing, okay? Then get them into the tax space. First thing, you need to be interested in something before you delve into it, okay? So majority of the time from our experience, you know, people are afraid of some things, things they don't know. Okay, so if you tell people, oh, get into the tech space, and they're like, oh, tech is this, tech is that, there's so many these, there's so many things to learn, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of misconceptions out there. Okay, so the first thing that we want to achieve is that interest, get you interested in the tech space, and also help more Africans transition into tech careers. Okay, and you see what? The last couple of years, the last four years, we've helped over 2,000 Africans into help them get you know their first job within the tech space and don't worry we have evidence and i'm going to share out those evidence with you i will share those evidence with you okay and then you get to see that if all the nigerians all the africans can actually achieve this then i can achieve the same thing also i can get it done if all the africans can do it i can do it okay so don't worry, I'm going to share that testimonials with you and you'll get to see it, okay? So the key thing for us is to get you interested. Hence the reason why we're having this masterclass today to talk about data, okay? To talk about data, something that you really get to see out there. We are taking on those topics, causing a lot of interest, interest and also excitement and getting you to understand certain concepts about the data ecosystem, okay? So that's the analytics. So if you're obviously we have majority of guys in Africa, you know, or even outside the country currently on the call. So if you're looking to get into the tech space, this is the best platform to be on. This is the best platform to be on. Okay. Now, um, who is your facilitator for today? My name is Ifemena Ipro. I have over a decade experience working across different roles within the data ecosystem. Okay, so I've worked as a data analyst, I've worked as a data scientist, I've worked as a data engineer. I've doubled into different roles within the data ecosystem, okay? And um, the also interest interesting thing about my experience is I started my experience as a management consultant. So, and I studied economics for my first degree. So we have a lot of people that did business related degrees in their undergraduate, okay? And they feel that they need a computer science degree to get started, you absolutely don't. I have a background in economics, okay? And I was able to transition into the data ecosystem and I've been doing that for the last decade. Currently, I reside in Canada, okay? Where I currently work as a consultant. So what I do in Canada at the moment is to work with businesses, all right? Work with businesses in implementation of data analytics, data science, or data engineering services. So that's what I do currently working with different clients. So I have clients in the UK, I have some clients in the US, but majorly now, since I'm centered in Canada, I'm, the majority of the clients I'm working with are now in Canada, okay? So that's exactly what I do. So a big job, I'm, you know, I'm focused more on the implementation of data analytics, data science and machine learning for these businesses within these regions I mentioned earlier. So that's my experience. But the key thing for what I needed to say, why I needed to start with that was I started, uh, you know, studying economics was what I did in university. And first job was not even tech, anything really tech related. It was a management consulting. So I did management consulting four years before transitioning into my first tech career. Okay. In those four years, while I was working as a management consultant, I was looking at how I wanted to get into the tech space. So currently, some of you on the call are looking to get, looking at, you know, actionable steps to take to get that first role within the tech space. All right, you want, you've heard that there's money in tech, you've heard about the flexibility, you've heard about so many things about getting started in the tech space, and you're looking to getting started. So before I actually go mine, okay, it took me about two years of self-learning, you know, talking and, you know, practicing and so on in order for me to get my first job. You know, and I kept asking myself and Adesa, we kept asking ourselves because we almost we transitioned within the same period of time. We started learning at the same time and we transitioned almost the same time. We got our first job almost the same time. And, you know, it was puzzling to us. Like, you know, the key question I kept asking is, who did have taken us two years to get our first job in the tech space? As data analysts, as data scientists, should it have taken us two years to go to get that job? You know, and when we were on the job, we saw that no, you shouldn't have taken us two years to get to, to have landed the job itself. 
So, and that's the reason why we started to analyze it to see how we can get more Africans aware, you know, interested, and also get them into the tech space. And I'm going to share some testimonials with you today. Okay. All right. So, um, we have a structure for today's session. Okay. We have a structure for today's session. And we're going to be breaking it down in this way structured data to, or to, from unstructured data into structured data, image processing. All right. And we're going to be using Python. Okay. We'll also talk about the pathway to becoming a data scientist and securing a job. We'll also explore remote full-time and tech relocation opportunities. Okay, we'll explore all this today. Okay, and we'll also talk about the growth internship program. And last but not the least, we have a special offer for you. So we're gonna go through these five things again today. So all I need from you guys, all I need from you. Um, Jedediah, do you wanna confirm if you can hear me well? Please confirm if you can hear me well. Loud, loud. Can anybody hear me well? Can you guys hear me well? Yes. Yes, yes. All right, fantastic. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to go through these five things today. Okay, we're going to go through these five things today. We're going to talk about getting unstructured data into structured data formats, and we're going to be using Python to do that. We'll talk about the part of becoming a data scientist. We'll talk about remote full-time and tech relocation opportunities. So if you're looking for a remote job, you're looking for a tech relocation opportunity. So you want to learn tech in order for you to jack you in order for you to relocate to or migrate to a new country, we would explore those opportunities. All right. I would also talk about the internship program. And we have a special offer for you today. So if you're here today, you're a VIP, guys. All I need from you to is just relax and listen. That's all I want you to do. Relax, listen, and engage. That's it. All right? You don't need to open Python. You don't need to open your laptop and start coding alongside with me. You are not supposed you know, you would understand the process. The key thing for you today is to understand the process, okay? To understand the process, okay? So these are the five things that we need to do. So if you wait to the end of the session, and you would see my colleague currently is dropping the attendance form. So if you wait to the end and your name is on the attendance, you will get all the materials that we used in class today. Every single thing, the recording, the material, the slides, everything will be sent across to you. So the key thing for today's session, like I said, sit back, relax, and just chill. Literally chill. You are a VIP. Let's do the work. Let me do the work. Let me do the talking. Let me do the old gesturing, the explanation. All you need to do is relax. Relax. Do you understand? Okay? So relax, chill, and uh, wait till the end of the session. You get to hear about a special offer and all the things that we have planned for you. Nobody else. Just you. What we have planned out for you. Okay? So let's jump straight into the session. Okay? Let's jump straight into the main session. Who is excited about this topic today? I want to see one in the chat. If you are excited about the topic today, put a one in the chat. Okay, let me see, let me see. Who is excited about the topic? On structured data into structured data, and we're gonna be talking about image processing using Python. All right, image processing. So I see you trickling in, fantastic. Okay, let's go. Just drop a one in the chat, very excited. Awesome, I'm actually excited also. I'm excited when I get, when people are also excited. Fantastic, all right. So let's jump straight into the session for today, okay? And now the first thing I would like to, add, you know, the first thing I would like to clear the air on is the difference between the data analyst and the data scientist. And I'm adding somewhere. I'm adding somewhere. So I want to take you on a journey, on a journey of self-understanding, okay? What I mean by self-understanding means that you will not understand, like anybody that speaks to you outside, you'll be the one to explain to them why certain things are the you know, why certain things are the way they are within the data ecosystem. And now, the reason why I'm starting there, I would explain, okay, as we delve into it, okay? Now, the difference between the data analyst and the data scientist, okay? Does anybody know the difference between the data analyst and the data scientist? Does anybody know? You can raise up your hand. I'll take it, maybe just one person. You can raise up your hand and I have some, I have a package for you. I have a package for you. If you can answer the question, I have something nice package for you, right? I like to do giveaways. All right, give you answer my question, you know, $1,000. Let's go. All right, nobody's raising up their hand, so I'm guessing nobody understands the difference between a data analyst and a data scientist. But not to worry, 
that's why you're here. We would explain everything to you today. All right. So we're going to be looking at two roles, the data analyst and the data scientist. Okay. And now we're going to be looking at this in, in two different, in two different um, spectrum. Okay. So the first spectrum would be the type of analytics, type of analytics, analytics. Okay. Now that's the first part we're going to look at. The second part would be data. Okay, what makes these two roles? What make them? What makes them different? What makes them different? What makes the role of a data analyst different from the role of a data scientist? Is based of these two things. It's based off these two things. Number one is the type of data, and number two, the type of analytics. I mean, and number two is data. I would also say the type of data, type of data. Okay, so now let's start with type of analytics. Okay. So we're going to focus on three types of analytics, three, A, B, and C. Okay. So we have descriptive, descriptive, okay, analytics, okay? We have diagnostics analytics. Sorry, I'm just going to get the razor. I made a huge error, okay? Okay, diagnostics uh, analytics. Okay, that's a mouth twister right there. Okay, let's do an eraser. Just gonna get a pen. Okay, diagnostic analytics. Okay, and we have the last but not the least, predictive analytics. Okay, all right. So these three, these are the three types of data. And we have also, when we talk about types of data, we have number one, we have structured data. Okay. And we have number two, we have unstructured, unstructured, unstructured data. Okay. Now let's look at the role of the data analyst versus the data at and data scientist based off these things that we've seen on the screen. So when we're looking at types of analytics, we are we are just focusing on three. There's a fourth one, but it's not very important at the moment. Okay. The types of data, we're looking at two types of data. Okay. Now let's look at these roles. What is descriptive analytics? What is diagnostic analytics? And what is predictive analytics? So we're looking at the names. May looking at the sound of what they mean, you might understand. So let's start with descriptive analytics. Let's start with descriptive analytics. So with descriptive analytics, what you're doing basically is answering the question of what happened. What happened? Okay. Okay. What happened? So if you work as a you work as a data professional in any organization, you're basically going to be answering questions. Okay. So the CEO, the CFO, and other major stakeholders within the business will be looking out to you, okay, for answers. They need answers from you. So take, for example, you work with, uh, let's say you work with, you know, you work with a fast, movable, consumable goods organization, let's say PNG, okay, or you work with um, Cousin, or you work with any other brand that sells a product, okay? Now, they would ask you, you know, what was our sales, all right? What was, you know, they were asking questions like sales, you know, what were sales from, what are our sales from January, okay, to December 2023, all right? What were our sales from January to December 2023? They don't know this thing. And they're asking you as a data professional within the organization, okay? So you'll be basically you analyzing the data to answer the question, what happened in, you know, from January to December 2023, based on our sales, okay? So you will start to do visualizations. You'll start to do visualizations like this, like a line chart, for example, where you have a January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, okay? So you would have this. And then you'll not start saying that, oh, in January, we made $3 million. We made $3 million. 
February, we did, you know, we made 6 million. All right. March, it dropped to like 4 million. Okay. In April, we did another, let's say, let's say about 2.5. Uh, March, it increased again to like 4.5. Okay. June, it dropped to like 1.5 and so on and so forth. You get the drift. So basically, you're analyzing your data. When you're talking about descriptive analytics, you are analyzing your data to tell a story about what happened. So what happened in January? Oh, we made $3 million. What happened in February? We made $6 million. What happened in March? We made $4 million. So you see, you're answering that question, what happened in terms of our sales? Okay, it could be customer related. You know, how many customers did we generate? How many new customers did we get? How many of our existing customers purchased the products? So basically, you're answering the question about what happened. Okay, what happened? What happened last month? What are our sales? What what are what are our sales revenue for last month? What are what are uh, you know whatever numbers you're looking for? You're basically asking a question about what happened. And as a data professional, you are giving the answers, okay? Now, diagnostic analytics on the flip side, okay? So when you're looking at diagnostic analytics, you're now finding out why did it happen? Why did it happen? So predictive and um, diagnostic analytics, why did it happen? Why? Okay, so we made 6 million in February. So we did more in February than every other month. We did, January, we did 3 million. February, we did 6 million. March, it dropped to 4 million. April, it dropped to 2.5 million. In March, it increased back to 4.5, then dropped again in June to 1.5 million. Okay, so now it's the business owner. You're not looking at, in February, we did, we did 6 million in February. I mean, you know, we did 6 million. Compared to every other month, February has been the best month so far. All right? Why did we make so much sales in February? So I like to call data professionals. I'm just trying to digress a little bit. All right? You know, um, there was an article, you know, on LinkedIn or some person, a top influencer on LinkedIn, posted a question. And the question was, you know, what... How would you explain your role to like your grandmother? Okay. How would you explain your role? This is your role as a data professional. How would you explain it to your grandmother? Okay. And you see the best way that I saw one comment and the comment wrote Oracle and Oracle. You will know what Oracle means. Okay. Basically, you know, villagers or the people, the traditionalists, if they're looking to get answers, okay, they go to their Oracle to ask. Okay, to say that, oh, why did this, you know, what happened and why did it happen? Tell us the reason. So we know what to do to avoid it or we know what to do to make it better. Do you understand? So that's the data professional for you. We're like the oracle within the organization. So if something is going well, they will come and meet you. Why is it going well? You know, why, is, why are we making so much profits so that we can continue to make more profits? If you're making a loss, we also need to know why we're making a loss. So like you're like the oracle within the business because everybody's going to come to meet you for answers, okay? Everybody's going to come to meet you for answers. So now we're looking at February and we are seeing that February, we did $6 million. And that has been the best so far, comparing it to January, March, April, May, and June. It's been the best month so far. So now, as a business, as a business, like a key stakeholder within the business, you need to figure out what happened. How were we able to achieve 6 million in February? Now, as a data analyst or the data scientist, you'll now start to drill in to find out why you made 6 million in February. All right? What strategies, what marketing strategies did you play? What kind of customers did you attract? Okay? What kind of, um, what kind of you know, marketing strategies my customers, it could be so many things that you'll, you'll be considering, but that's where your role as a data analyst and a data scientist will come in, all right? You answer the question, why did it happen, okay? But now, the last one, which is predictive, predictive analytics, and I'm going to take it down here. It is now talking about what will happen, what will happen, what will 
happen. Okay, what will happen? So you see, this this is like the most interesting part of this of this particular aspect. Okay, what will happen? So if we know all our numbers generally to December, let's say we now start to make it. Let's say we made another three point five million in this. I'm just going to put random numbers. Okay, all right. So let's make an assumption that we know all our numbers from last year. So the first question was sales from December to January to December 2023. So as a data professional, you'll get those numbers. Okay, we made 4 million in January. We made 3 million in this. We've done all that mathematics already. So we now move to why did it happen? You want to figure out why certain things happen within the business within that year, 2023. Okay, now the, eventual, the eventuality is you also want to find out what will happen in 2024, okay? Okay, you want to also want to find out what will happen in 2024 or 2025. Are we going to continue to make profits? Are we going to continue making bringing in more customers? Are we going to continue, you know, at a certain pace? You know, are we going to continue losing customers? So you also want to extrapolate, you want to predict what would happen, okay? For the guys living outside the country, you'll find out that if this weekend now, for example, by Sunday, you're preparing for the new week, okay? You want to know what the weather is going to look like this week. Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be rainy? So that you know how to plan the kind of dress you want to wear, okay? So do you want to wear something thick? Do you want to wear something tight? Do you want to wear something leather-ish so that if it's raining, you don't get wet and so on? So you see, as an individual, you already do, you, all, you need predictive analytics to make certain decisions. So if you can use, you can get your weather app to look at what is going to happen in the next seven days or 10 days in some instance, to know what's going to happen in like seven days. So you can plan out your activities. You can plan out your event. You can plan out the clothes you wear. Now the business, talk more of an actual business that deals with so many customers, okay? As a business professional, you also want to find out what will happen next month. I need to know, am I going to make a loss next month? Am I going to make a revenue next month? All right. Is my customer going to decrease? Am I going to decrease? You know, there are so many assumptions, you know, so many things. So in order for you to avoid, you know, working without any information, all right, you need to also be able to predict what will happen so you can plan better as a business owner. Okay. All right. So now, the key thing now is let's divide this, let's divide this into different roles. Okay. So you see the first two, the first two that you see here, okay, is for the role of the data analyst. Okay. The data analyst. So the data analyst, okay, deals majorly with what we call historical data. <laughs> historical data that has happened, stuff that has happened. So if you say that what happened last month, come on, that's something that it happened last month, it's historical. Do you understand? It is old. All right. So the data analyst focuses majorly on historical data. Okay. Data that has happened, things that have happened. Okay. So it's based off things, things that have happened that you can tell the story around why what happened and why it happened. So it has happened already. So that's how you can start to find, figure out what happened and why did it happen. Okay, so the data analyst focuses majorly on these two, descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics. Those are the two focus points for the data analyst. Okay, so the data analyst is not going to do any form of prediction. The data analyst is not going to do any form of prediction, zero prediction. But now the data scientist on the other hand, will deal with all three of them combined together, the data scientist, data scientist, okay? All right, the data scientist will now deal with all the three of them together. The data scientist will deal with what happened, will deal with why did that particular thing happen, and also the fourth one will now predict. So it's at this prediction stage, all right, you now start to talk about what we call machine learning, okay? We start talking talking about what we call machine learning, also statistical modeling and stuff like that. Okay, um, statistical modeling models and so on and so forth. The reason why you need those statistical models, machine learning, is for prediction. All right, it's for prediction. 
to be able to predict, is to be able to predict certain activities, to be able to forecast, okay? That's when you start to use your statistical models, machine learning, and so on and so forth. So that's why you see the data science, the data analyst will never need to do any form of machine learning. So you won't, an organization will never be recruited for a data analyst and you'll see most know how to model data or most know how to do statistical modeling or machine learning and so on. You will never see that, okay? That's not the role of the data analyst. The data analyst is majorly for these two parts, descriptive and diagnosing what happened and why did it happen. Now, the data scientists on the flip end will now answer those two, three questions. What happened, why it happened, and what will happen, future prediction, okay? So those are the key things you need to know about the role of the data, and the difference between the role of a data analyst and the role of a data scientist, okay? All right. So now looking at this for the first one, okay, okay, do you guys understand now the, the first aspect, anyways? Do you understand that? If you understand that, just put either DA or DS, depending on your EA or depending on what you want, okay? Put it in the chat, okay? So if you want to become a data analyst, put DA. If you want to become a data scientist, put DS, okay? Let's see, okay? All right. So if you understand, put it in. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It doesn't matter, don't worry, it's fine. Any career path that you choose is okay. It's fantastic. Okay, fantastic. So so that's the that's the first aspect. Those are that those are the first aspect for us to consider. Okay, but we have another aspect. We only dealt with types of analytics. I'm just gonna clean this so that we don't interfere with the other one. Okay, all right. So let's take the other one. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the types of data. So now this is the first difference. The type of analytics that they do, okay, makes them different. The data analyst would only do descriptive and diagnostic analytics, while the data scientist would do all three of them, descriptive, diagnostics, and predictive analytics, all three. So basically, this is two, and this is three, all three of them, okay? Now, let's think about type of data. We have structured data, and we have unstructured data. Structured data, okay, okay, structured data are data that you can put in a table. They are data that you can put in a table, okay, data you can put in a table. So if you look at this, if you see any, if, okay, let me use a very, very good example, all right? So how many of us have played this game before? How many of us have played this game before? I'm just going to do a very quick one, okay, all right? We have name name, animal, some people say it's animal. I'm not sure, I'm not sure where that, those people are from, but some people say animal, I'm not sure. <laughs> animal, place, okay, and we have thing, okay? And you have your alphabet in here, you have different alphabet. How many of us play this game? Let me see, the, let me see, you know, um, if you play this game, just put a yes in the chat, okay? Then you have A, B, C, D, and E, okay? We play this game in the past, but you know, it's a table. Do you understand? So, you know, somebody would now say, Oh, I call on A. You'll see the person start looking for, Oh, name, Ayo, animal, antelope, okay, um, place, Akure, you know, um, thing, you know, anvil, and so on and so forth. Okay, the person calls B, B for bio, okay, and so on and so forth. Are you putting those information? So, this is a table. This is what we call a table. Now, a table comprises of what? Your row, okay? So you have rows, different rows. Row A, row B, row C, row D, row E. So this is what we call your rows, okay? Okay? And you also have column, okay? Name is a column. Animal, column. Place, column. Thing, column. So we have columns, okay? So a table comprises of rows and columns. So people will also say column. So, you know, anyhow you want to pronounce it, it's as long as any other person understands, that's all that matters, okay? So it's a table, okay? Structured data is a table, basically. Data that is in a table. So you see it comprises of what? Rows and columns, okay? So you have name, animal, place, and thing. So you have everything structured. It's a structure. You cannot come and write the name of an animal in this particular place. It is wrong. 
okay? There's a place for animal, okay? All right, unless the person's name is Kati, okay? All right, so you see, the name has a school name. Animal has its place. So everything is structured. There's a structure to the way the data is being arranged. Okay? So if you open up Excel, Excel is a perfect example of structured data. So if you don't open up Excel today, you see Excel is in rows and columns. You see these tiny, tiny cells on Excel. It's in rows and columns. It's like in a big table. Do you understand? So that's what, you know, structured data is all about. Now, the other part is on structured data. These are data that cannot, cannot, cannot be put in the table, cannot be put in a table, okay? Cannot be put in a table. So what are those? What are those? What are those kind of data you cannot put in a table? A very big, the first one I'm gonna talk about is a picture. So if you take a picture today, you take a picture, you can't put and you take it to Excel. You see, it will fit into the table. It will fit into the Excel. It will just be hanging around, okay? You can't, it can't fit into rows and columns. You can't put a picture into rows and columns. You can't put an audio, audio file. So today, if you record an audio, like you record a voice note or you record a music or a song, you can't put it into rows and columns. You can't put words or you can't put the, you know, the recording into rows and columns. Okay, a video. If you record a video on your phone and you take it to any other, you can't put a video into rows and columns. Okay, so that's why we call it unstructured because it can't fit into rows and columns. Okay, it can't fit into rows and columns. So now, amongst the, the among the data analysts and the data scientists, which of them? is working on what type of data? Okay, can anybody guess? Let me see, let me see it in the chat. I like interactions, I love interactions. Okay, so let me see. Which one do you think does what, handles what kind of data? So the data analyst would handle which type of data and the data scientist would handle which type of data? Can you guess? All right, can you try to guess? Let me see. Let me see, let me see, put it in the chat if you know which one is which, okay? So now, using this, all right? Let me just quickly talk on that. So the, the structured data is handled by both the data analyst and the data scientist, okay? So both the data analyst and the data scientist will work with structured data, Okay, both the data analyst and the data scientist will work with structured data. So I can see some answers coming in, fantastic. I think I've been doing this for a while now, and I'll tell you guys, you guys are one of the smartest people I've dealt with. You guys are able to decode this within the first, you know, less than 30, about 30 minutes that we started this course, we started this class today. You guys already understand it to the extent that you're answering questions already. You guys are great, okay? You're up to a great start, I'll say that, okay? Now, the, the data analyst and the data scientist will work with structured data. They'll work with, both of them will work with structured data, okay? But now, on structured data, only the data scientist, okay? Only the data scientist will work with on structured data. The data analyst cannot analyze on structured data, okay? The data analyst doesn't have the power to analyze uh, on structured data. Only the data scientists will have the capacity to analyze, you know, on structured data, okay? So that's something you need to understand. So these are the key difference between the role of the data analyst and the data scientist, okay? These are the key reasons. And the reason why I started with this is very simple, like I mentioned, so you understand it a lot better. Okay, so the data analyst is not required to analyze on structured data. So for our session today, okay, for our session today, we are focused on, now as a data scientist, if you now get a job as a data scientist, how, what kind of analysis would you be doing? What would you be doing for structured data and so on and so forth? So now let's take a look at it. So for, as a role as a data scientist, this is what we are focusing on today, because we are dealing with what we call on structured data, 
unstructured data. Okay? So now, unstructured data, because it is unstructured, take, for example, a picture. A picture. How do you analyze a picture? Okay? How do you analyze a picture? A picture is unstructured. You can put a picture into rows and columns. Okay? But now, as a data scientist, how do you analyze a picture? How do you analyze a picture? An image, okay? So a picture, image, you can use image also. All right, how do you analyze an image? How? As a data scientist, this is why I love science. This is why I love data science. These are things that other people cannot do, okay? But you see how easy it is. You see how easy it is today. Don't worry, I'll show you, okay? I'll show you everything. All right, so unstructured data. So the first step, the first step when you're dealing with unstructured data, okay? The first step when you are dealing with unstructured data, the first thing to do is to transform it. The first thing you need to do is to transform the data, okay? So in that unstructured manner, you can't do anything. When it is unstructured, you cannot do anything. So your role as the data scientist, okay? Your role as a data scientist is for you to find structure where there is no structure. Let's go. I think I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself with this, okay? All right? The role, your role as a data scientist, I'll repeat myself. I'll repeat myself, don't worry. Your role as a data scientist is to find structure where there is no structure. I think I need a round of applause for that, for coming up with that. Off the top of my head, I think I need a round of applause. Please give me a round of applause before I continue. I need a round of applause, guys. I need a round of applause. No round of applause. Let's call it a day. <laughs> All right. Someone has given me a round of applause. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I will lie. Okay. So I'll repeat myself one more time because I love what I said. Okay. <laughs> Your role as a data scientist, okay, is to find structure where there is no structure. Two words are for you. One by budget. One by <laughs> find structure where there is no structure. Okay, find structure. FA two thousand and twenty-four. FA two thousand and twenty-four. Okay, so we need to transform. So your role, your you have to take this unstructured data and transform it into structured data. Okay, into a structured data. And this is where the data analysts cannot do that because of the capacity of the kind of tools that they use. The data analyst will be working with tools like Microsoft Excel, Power BI, Tableau, SQL, and so on. Okay, but your role as a data scientist would get you to work with a tool called Python. Okay, Python, which is by far the most versatile data analytics software uh, programming language that you could use in doing anything data science related. Okay, now we're gonna use Python. I'm gonna show you the process in today's session, all right? So your role is to convert this unstructured data into structured data. And we're gonna be using Python to do that. We're gonna be using Python to do that. But now, this structured data, how would this structured data look like? I will show you. I will show you. All right? So this session, let me bring it to you again. This session is not supposed to make you a data scientist in two hours. No. Okay? It's just for you to understand. It's the understanding that matters. A lot of people think that they need to know how to practice. They need to know how to do it by themselves before they become an expert. But in order for you to be an expert, you will need to understand you need to understand first off, and that's why I'm taking my time to explain it one step at a time. Understanding is, is more, is better, I would say. Understanding the process is better than the coding itself. When you don't know how to code, you, you know, you're obviously good, okay? You are all the way there. But understanding, understanding is what gets you started, okay? So, like I mentioned, we have the unstructured data, which is the image, which is the picture, okay? All right, now, how do you make, transform unstructured data into structured data? That is exactly what we are going to be doing today. 
And we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be exploring two things in Python, okay? So we're going to be exploring what we call NumPy. NumPy, okay? And we're going to be exploring OpenCV. OpenCV. So we're going to be exploring these two. They call them libraries. They are referred to as libraries. So these guys are referred to as what we call libraries, okay? All right, so there are libraries, library packages in Python, okay? So we're going to be looking at NumPy, and we're going to be looking at OpenCV. So, you know, most times, when if you've ever done a little bit of data science, you've learned data science online, okay? You just see that everybody will say, import NumPy as NP. Everybody, even if they don't use it in the old code, they do not use it throughout, okay? You just see people write, import NumPy and NP. When I started, let me tell you something. Let me digress a little bit. When I started data science, when I started learning, I felt like import NumPy as NP must be, it must be there because, you know, <laughs> I felt it was there. Like it was just something that you need to run to start coding, okay? I never knew why, okay? And that's why I say that understanding the why is better than the coding itself. Understanding why, okay, is better. And that's exactly what we're going to be exploring today. So NumPy, we're going to be exploring NumPy. NumPy stands for numerical Python. We'll get there. When we get to Python, I'll show you everything. Don't worry. I'm not going to rush. So Python. Now, um, you can download, but Python is free of charge. You can download it at your will at any point in time. All right. Well, I'm not going to walk you through installation and all that. Okay. Um, that's not what the session is for. So I'm just going to get my Python file, my Python as a Python file my Python page, okay, up on the screen. Okay, so this is, you know, this this is Python. I'm gonna be using Jupyter Notebook, okay, for my analysis. So you're not supposed to become a Python expert in this class, please. I need to just reiterate again, understand, first of all, just understand. Let me explain and you understand, first off, before you start to think about the coding, okay? I'm just showing you, okay? Just take it one step at a time, okay? So this is Jupyter Notebook, okay? And this is where I'm going to be writing my Python code, okay? This is where I'm going to be writing my Python code. All right, so we're going to start from the beginning, okay? I will open a new Python file, okay? I'll open a new Python file, and let me write a little bit, okay? So what we're going to do, what, what are we doing today? We're doing unstructured data, unstructured data, into structured into structured data. And we're going to be exploring what we call image processing. Okay, we're going to be doing, looking at what? Image processing. So I'm just going to go, going to be looking at image processing. Okay, and I said I'm going to be, we're going to be using NumPy and open CV. Okay. All right. Now that's NumPy and open CV. So when you're dealing with, you know, uh, let's say NumPy, for example, let's start with NumPy. So NumPy, I'm just going to put it here. Okay. NumPy also is called numerical Python. It's called numerical Python. So this is one of the most versatile, if you're a data scientist or you're looking to become a data scientist, NumPy is used for numerical statistical computation. So all those, your analysis, your core analysis, mathematical analysis will be done using NumPy. Statistical analysis will be used, you'll be using NumPy to do that, okay? It's a very, very dynamic, very, very versatile library as your role as a data scientist, okay? So now NumPy, okay, NumPy, okay? NumPy is what we're going to be using it for today. We're going to be using it for image processing, okay? So NumPy has its own data structure. Let me put it that way. It has its own data structure, okay? So the way you open Excel today, the way you open Excel, and you see it in that tabular format, in NumPy, it's slightly different, okay? There is what we call vector, okay? The first one is called vector. So I'll explain it to them and I'll show you examples for you to understand. And you'll see that you already know it. 
You just don't know what, why it's called that, okay? So the first one is vector, which is one dimensional. I'll call it 1D, okay? Let me just spell it out in full because so people will forget, okay? And number two, number two is called a matrix. Matrix, okay? Like, uh, what's his name? Is it Andrew Tate? Escape the matrix. So if you always remember Andrew Tate as a data scientist, you'll know matrix. Matrix, matrix is what? Matrix is two-dimensional, okay? Two-dimensional, two-dimensional, okay? Okay? Two dimensional. So these are the two data structures that you kind of have in NumPy. So you have vector, which is one dimension, and matrix, which is two dimension. As a beginner, you'll be like, this is the reason why I don't like data science. All of you currently on the call, you'll be like, this is the reason why I don't like data science, all these technical jargons. Okay, but don't worry, relax. Like I said at the start, relax. Re what? Relax. Just listen. That's what I want you to do. Relax. You're here. You're with analytics. I got you. I got you. Okay? So all these technical jargons, I would explain it to you, and you'll see how simple these things are. Okay? Don't worry. So NumPy, two data structures, vectors and matrix. So like I said, if you remember Andrew Tate, okay, escape the matrix. You remember that. Oh, matrix, NumPy, data structure. Okay? So it's... I'm just making, I'm just joking around, okay? So 2D and 1D, let's explain that in two seconds, okay? All right, let me explain that using, you know, a very simple example, all right? Now, let me come here, new line, okay? So I will come here to import my library, import libraries, okay? All right, so I'm gonna say import NumPy as NP. Okay, and I'll explain that in a second. Okay, and I'm also going to bring in matplotlib. Okay, matplotlib. The pyplot. As plt. I would explain all these things. Don't worry. I'm just. I need to type, and I'm not the fastest typer. Okay, from pil import image. Okay, so now let's talk about NumPy. NumPy, like I mentioned, numerical Python for statistical analysis, okay? But for today's session, we're gonna be using for image processing, okay? For this one, Matplotlib is for data visualization, visualization, okay? And the last one is to, is to import image to let's say I'll uh, say import image because we are dealing with the image we are doing Im image processing so we need to be able to bring the image into the Python environment so you see there's no picture currently in on the screen Python does not come with pictures okay we need to be able to bring the picture into Python okay so this one is to heal which is this here P I L okay which stands for Python image library so let me I'll write it there for you don't worry import image. Okay, so PIL stands for Python Image Library. Python Image Library. Okay, so these are the things that we need. So you see, I wrote no, import NumPy as NP. Okay, import NumPy as NP. Okay, import NumPy as NP. So if you have a friend and your friend's name is Ayodele, you know, it's like, oh, oh, I know. You know, my name is Ayo Daily, but you can call me AY for short. You know, we have a lot of people have those kind of nicknames. Okay. My name is Efemena, but you can call me EF for short. Okay. So rather than calling me Efemena in full, just call me EF. Don't call me the old full Efemena. All right. So let me see. Is there any other example I could use? Oh, my name is Jedediah, but you can just call me JD for short. Do you understand? Rather than saying Jedediah, Okay, Jedi is an amazing guy, one of the guys with analytics. It's gonna come in later. We'll get to speak to him later. Okay, so my name is Jedediah, but you can call me JD for short. Okay, so you, you see, rather than saying Jedediah in full, you can say it in words, JD for short. So that's exactly what is happening here. So rather than me saying non-pi, call me what? MP for short. You get me? <laughs> so rather than see this word, imagine. My name is matplotlib.pyplot. That's a long name. Who wants to say that? Uh, who wants to say that? Who wants to say matplotlib.pyplot? 
Ah, that's even word. Calm down. Just call me PLT for short. You get me? Call me PLT. Don't call me that long name. Call me PLT. All right? So this on this image is very simple. It's very simple. If I want to use the as, I could use the as something. But well, image is pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So we'll keep it that way. Okay. So that's we importing the libraries. We importing the libraries. So we're getting started gradually, 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 gradually. So now I said I wanted to explain what a vector. So I said I wanted to tell you what the difference between a vector, which is one dimension, and a matrix. So let's look at an example, a very clear example. So let me say number, number equals to, and I would say NP, so it's array. So well, you don't need to be a programmer. I'm just showing you the difference between a vector and a matrix. So just understand. You don't need coding, forget the coding I'm writing. Look at the end result, understand. Do you understand? Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Four and five. Okay. So uh, this is my vector. So I could say, number okay and you see so this is what we call a vector this is what we call a vector it's one dimensional just one dimension so it doesn't now let me when you see the difference between some of them i will ask you for the difference so the other one is called a matrix okay matrix so now let's say i'll call this one uh let me just say age people's age age equals to np still the same np dot array okay open brackets in that or not put different list so i'll say somebody this one is 10 years old this person is 11 this person is 12 okay now create another list of another set of people i'll say 20 21 20 23 and 27 okay and the last set of people do okay Create another list of 31, 55, and 78. Okay. So now if I read age, okay. Okay, sorry, give me a second. MP dot array. Dot, 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 dot. So I'll put this in a list. Sorry. Okay, so you see this is one dimensional, and you see this is a matrix. This is three by three matrix. This is a three by three matrix. So your numbers are stacked upon each other. So it's more dynamic, okay? So this is a three by three matrix and this is a vector. So this is one dimensional, okay? This is one dimensional, okay? And this is two dimensional, two dimensional. So does anybody see any difference? If you see a difference between the two of them, put the one in the chart. So if you see a difference between the first one, which is a vector, and the other one, which is a matrix. A matrix is something that we all you we did in secondary school at one point, okay? So if you see a clear difference between a vector and the matrix, so you see the two of them. So one is one dimensional, just in row, just one line, straight up. Then the other one is two dimensional. So now you have rows and you have columns. So you see you have your row, all right, you have row one, row two, row three, and you have column one, column two, and column three. Okay, so let me bring my pen so that I can write a little bit. Where is my pen? Give me a second, let me look for it. Okay, I'll bring in my pen. So I'm gonna go waste that too much time. So you see this, this one is just on one row. I'm gonna change the color. Okay, this is just on one row. Whereas your matrix is now as what you call your rows and columns. So you see, this is like a table, okay? All right, so you have your column, okay? And your rows, okay? So this is column one, these are your three, this is three columns, three columns, three columns, okay? And you have your rows, row one, row two, row three, okay? So rows. Okay, three rows. And that's why we call it three by three matrix. All right. Well, basically, this is just for your information. Okay, this is for your information. So we have the first 1D matrix, and you have the 2D matrix. I said 1D, not by a vector, and you have the 2D, which is the matrix. Okay. So now 
Let me now show you image processing. Let's use NumPy for image processing now, okay? Let's use NumPy for image processing. Let's talk about that, okay? All right. So that, first of all, let me go and look for a, a picture online. Let me look for a picture, one picture. Okay, let me, I think I know what picture to use. I would use 10 analytics. So I'll search 10 analytics online, okay? 10 analytics online, okay? Just search 10 analytics. And you see, let me go to images because I want to do a bit of image processing. I'll go to images. So I want to use an image from 10 analytics. Okay, so we have a lot of images. You see, we've been doing a lot of things, guys. See a lot of, see we, the kind of work that we've been doing, okay? Okay, see this fantastic one. So this is an article by Tech Point Africa. Okay, this is my, this is me here at Ephemena, and this is Adesa, okay? All right, so um, you see here, 10 analytics reward winners with $1,000. Okay, in Beta Hackathon. This is by Tech Point Africa. But anyways, it's just the picture I need, not the article. It's just the picture. So I want to, you know, do a little bit of image processing with this picture. Okay, so I'm going to right click and I'll save the image. Okay, I'll save the image. If you have your own image on your desktop, don't bother, don't stress yourself. Use your own picture. Okay, all right. So I'm going to click on save image as. Okay, and I will save it to my desktop. I will name it, I will call it um, Ife Adesa. I'll call it Ife Adesa, okay? And I'll save the image. So it's been downloaded, see here, downloaded, fantastic. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to load the image. We need to bring the image. So currently the image is on my desktop, it's not inside the Python environment. So I need to bring the image into my Python environment. I need to go on, I need to tell Python, Python, do you know what? I want to do image processing and I need to send you on an errand, okay? So go to my desktop, go and look for this picture and bring it into the environment, all right? Just like your errand boy or your sales boy, whatever you want to call them, okay? So I want to tell Python now, go to my desktop, go and look for this image and bring it for me, bring it inside. So load, load the image. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to load the image. Okay, we need to bring the image, that image I just downloaded, I need to bring it into my Python environment. Okay, so what do I need to do? So I'll call it, um, I can call it anything I want. So I'm going to call it Kito, okay, all right? And I'm going to say image, all right, image dot open, okay? And now I want to look for the picture. Let me go and look for the picture, okay? I want to look for the picture. Let me open my Explorer, okay? Give me a second, I'm going to open this up right here, okay? A desktop, okay, fantastic. All right, so I'm going to look for the picture, okay? So it is Ephemena Adesa. So I'm just going to look for Ephemena Adesa real quick. The type of data, okay? So if you may not a Deza, if you may not a Deza, where are you? Okay, do you know what? Okay, yes, see here. This is it here. So this is the picture right here. Okay. This is the picture right here. So this is the picture here. It's on my desktop. If you may not a Deza, this is the picture I just downloaded. Okay. So now I want to get this picture into Python. Okay. All right. So what I'll do is right click on the picture, right click on the picture, right click on it, okay? And you see copy as path, copy as path. That's what you're looking for, copy as path. Click on it, okay? And it's copy the path. Now, if you right click and you don't see copy of, as path, you are using an uh, older system, okay? You're using a slightly older system, um, operating system, even though it's Windows, okay? So now, if you right click and you don't see copy as path, don't bother, don't worry, I'll show you another way. So what you wanna do, if you don't see copy as path, press the shift key on your laptop, press it down, don't take your hand off the shift key and right click. Now you'll see a longer list, you'll see a longer list, okay? Okay, so I showed you two ways. The first way is to right click and you'll see copy as path. The second way is to hold the shift key on your laptop, hold the shift key and right click while you're holding the shift key. 
you will see copy as path. You'll see it here, copy as path. So if the first one doesn't work for you, do the second one and it will work, okay? Now I'm gonna get the picture into Python. So I'm gonna put that copy as path. I'll load the path. This is the path. This is the path. So you see it here, if you may not add JPEG, JPG, okay? So now I'm going to do, peak. I'm going to say peak, okay? And I'll run peak to see what it gives me at the end of the day, okay? I'll run peak for me to see what it gives me at the end of the day, okay? So now let's bring it in. I'm going to run it. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm going to just put a small R in front here and voila. So you see now my picture is not in my Python environment. So you see picture that used to be on the web was downloaded, okay? And now this picture is now in my Python environment. This picture is currently in my Python environment. So it never used to be in my Python environment, okay? Now I have used the image library, this image library, okay? I have used it in loading the image into my Python environment. Now let's start the analysis, okay? Let's start the analysis, okay? Now the next thing I need to do, okay? I want to show you something. I want to explain the concept. I want to explain it to you so that you understand why we are doing what we are doing, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is to confirm the type of data it is, confirm the type of data. Okay, all right. So now, peak, I'm going to use the type function in Python and I'm going to put the peak inside, type. So now you see that the type, Python is telling me that this image, this picture, this image is, is confirming that it is a JPEG image file. It is telling me it is a JPEG image file. It is telling me it is a JPEG image file. So it is a picture. So, and I mentioned initially, I told you from the start, the role as a data scientist is to find structure where there is no structure. Always remember that, if you may not, 2024, okay? <laughs> All right, the role as a data scientist is to find structure where there is no structure. The image, this picture, this JPEG image file, there is no structure inside. There's currently no structure. It's just a picture, okay? But now, your role is not to, uh, to transform that structured data, this image file, into a structured data format. Now, let me show you how to do it. And you see how simple it is. It's just one line, just one line, just one line of code. You see how easy it is. I'm going to show you now. So now, transform. I'm going to tell you, just documenting my process, okay? Transform, transform, okay? Transform the image from JPEG file, JPEG, so you see it's a JPEG image file, just copy it so I don't waste my time. Okay, from JPEG image file into a NumPy array. Into a NumPy array. Hey, oh, well, you guys are learning this, you're learning this for free, is in, in my, imagine. So you see what we are doing, but you see the impact that we are doing at the moment. Okay, so transform the image, I say I imagine, oh my, well, image. Image, transform the image from a JPEG file into a NumPy array. And we're going to be using a matrix because this is a very dynamic, it's a dynamic, it's a picture, okay? Very, very dynamic. Okay, so we're going to be changing it into a matrix, okay? A NumPy array matrix, okay? Now, you see one line. I'm going to say peak, peaks. I'm going to call this one peaks, okay? You remember back in the days, we used to say peaks, peaks, peaks. So now I'm using peaks. Okay, so I'll say peaks, which is my adjusted, the adjusted one, the one that would I want you to transform now. Okay, so this will now be np dot as array, as array. Okay, and I'll put this picture, you know, this peak. Peak is currently a JPEG file. Peak is currently a JPEG file. So I'll put that peak, I want to transform that picture into a NumPy array. So I'll say peaks. Okay. You see now, see, see what will happen. This is where the abracadabra is going to come in play. This is where the magic, this is what makes you unique as a data scientist. Now let's take it, let's take a look at it. Voila. You see now, the picture that we had earlier, the picture that we had, this picture of myself and Adeza, this picture 
has been transformed into a NumPy array. So it's numbers. You just see numbers. 156, 136, 112. 136, 156, 136, 112. You see another one, 151, 146, 140. So what has happened? Let me show you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what has happened. I love this. I love my, I love my job. Okay? Demystifying difficult concepts. Let me explain it to you. How many of you have heard of RGB? R, G, and B. How many of you have heard of RGB? How many of you have heard of RGB? If you've heard of it, put it in the chat. What is the full meaning of R, G, and B? What does it mean? What does it mean, guys? What does RGB stand for? RGB. Red, blue, green, and blue. I said when I I wasn't joking when I said you guys are one of the smartest people I facilitated for. So red, green, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. So that's exactly what you have here. That's literally what you have here. Basic concept, RGB. So this is now what? Red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. Now, do you guys know what? Now, that's the first one. That's the first aspect. Now, do you guys know what a pixel? What a pixel is? What a pixel is? A pixel. Now, let me explain the pixel. If you take a picture today, all right, and you zoom into that picture to the maximum you can zoom into the picture, you see that the picture is just a bunch of big, big blocks, boxes. Boxes, boxes, different boxes, different boxes. If you zoom in, let me let me even open a new page. All right, do you know what I'll do? Let me clear out my screen. Okay, so I'm looking at pixel. So let me Google pixel. Let me show you what a pixel stands for. Okay, pixel. So you see it. You see this. Have you seen this thing before? It looks box, 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 box. box. So a picture, a normal picture. When you take a snap a picture, you will see it as if you may not do the peace sign. Do you understand? When you now zoom into that picture, you now find out that it's just boxes of different colors, different colors, boxes of different colors that now makes up the full picture. Boxes, small, small boxes of different colors. So basically, each line is a pixel. Each line is a pixel. So you will find out that, uh-uh, if you mean, uh, that's too much now. That's too much data. So you see one, just one picture. See the amount of data that you can get from one picture, just one picture, one picture. See the amount of data you can get from a single picture, one picture. So when they talk about big data, when they're talking about big data, it should not trickle your fancy. Like it should, it should get you excited. Like an organization like Google. Now I just searched for analytics earlier and you see, you saw the amount of pictures that you can get online. So you imagine the amount of analysis that you can actually do with those pictures. Imagine, or Instagram, you take a selfie today, you add it to your story, you add it to your post, you send it to your friends on WhatsApp. You see, data is just flying up and down, okay? So just one picture, one picture, see the amount of data that we have in there, of data. And let me now show you, let me just take it in one step at a time. So basically, this is a pixel, okay, RGB. So I'm going to come here for people that I've never seen of RGB before. I would explain it to you. So RGB, I'm just going to look for, where's my RGB color? Okay. <clears throat> so RGB, red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. So if you look at this now, this is 156, 136, 112. 156, 136, 112. 156, 136, 112. 156. No, I have a I have sorry, I make it I did get myself distracted too much. Sorry about that. Okay. 156, 136, 112. Now let's put in those numbers. 136, 156, 136, 112. Ha, awesome. 112. So you see it here. It's sort of like a bluish color, like blue, faded blue kind of kind of color. All right. Faded blueish kind of color. So you'll notice see it here. So you see these parts where these are or these parts. You'll find out that this part of the hand, okay, matches what you're seeing here. Matches 
Okay, sorry, Brown. Sorry. Okay, 156, 136, 112. I'm going to press enter. Okay, so it's a brown, it's a brown color. Brown. So it's a brown. So if you look at the image, you'll find out that you'll see the background. Okay, the background all is this, it matches the same color. So you see the color here, the color, this 156, 136, 112. When you put it in this RGB color, Red 156, 136, 112. You find out that the brown is the brown that you see at the back, okay, on the background. Let's take another RGB. Let's take another color code. Let's take another one, okay? Let's take another one. Let's take another one. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Let's take this 255, 246, 223. 255, 246, 223. 233. 255, 246, 255, 246. Two three three, two three three. All right. So it's kind of like orange. It's orange. Okay. So if you look at the picture again, you'll find out that it is somewhere in the picture. Okay. There's an orange feeling. Orange. There's orange in this particular picture somewhere. So basically, this is just this picture. You see how we have converted this picture into structured. So what we've done now is to take this picture that is unstructured and we've transformed it into a structured format that we can now start to analyze, that we can start to analyze, okay? So now let me show you, let me, let, let's go back to the data type. I'm gonna show you the data type now, okay? Okay, so uh, let's say data type of new of transform data, let's say of transform pictures. Okay, so I'm going to use type. I'm going to put peaks, peaks, peaks inside. So you see now, peaks. When you transform the image, when you transform the picture, it becomes what? It becomes a NumPy ND array. It's a NumPy array, basically. So now let me show you something very interesting. Let me visualize these numbers. Let me visualize it for you. So let me visualize, visualize the transformed transform data, okay? So these numbers, I want to visualize it for you. So I would use my visualization technique, so which is PLT, okay? So, you know, at the start, at the start of the session, I told you matplotlib.pyplot as PLT for data visualization. So let's visualize our data. This data, this data that we've transformed, I'm gonna visualize it for you. So PLT.IM show, okay? And I'll put it as uh, PIX, okay? So I'll visualize it. So now you see that data that was unstructured initially, a picture that was unstructured initially, okay? That was unstructured, I could not, I couldn't do any for, I couldn't do too much with it. Now I've brought it in, transformed it into a number array, into a structured data format. And now I can now plot that picture on a chart. Okay, and you see it here, zero by six, uh, six, 10 or thereabout by zero by, so I can see the height of the picture and I can see the breadth, the width and the length, the width and the length, okay? The width and the height rather, anyway, the width and the height. So you see it here, transform that data into this format, okay? And you can start to do anything that you want to do. You can do color manipulation. You can do all the things that you want to do, okay? And you can make all the adjustments that you want to make. But this is you using NumPy. This is you using NumPy for image processing. All right? Now, let me show you OpenCV. OpenCV. Let me introduce you to OpenCV. OpenCV. Is one word rather open CV. So I'm going to say import CV2. This is one of this is the found this is the foundation. Now anything about image processing, NumPy, open CV is the next. Open CV is the foundation. Everybody that does image processing, computer vision, you use open CV for it. Okay. So I'm going to be very quick with this because we don't have too much time anymore. Okay. Um, but you see the power behind open CV. You see the power behind open CV. So you see what I will do now. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna load it. I'm gonna load this particular. I'm going to load it. Okay. All right. Okay. 
So now I want to use OpenCV to bring in the image. I want to use OpenCV to bring in the image. So rather than using image.open, I want to use OpenCV to bring in that image. So CV2 dot I am read. I am read. Okay. So CV2, this one I'll call it uh CV CV peak. Okay, I'll call it CV peak. So you remember that this is open CV. Okay. So let me bring it in. So you see, you see, when I'm bringing this image using open CV, it comes already, it takes it. It does, okay, let me ask anybody, does anybody see what has happened? So with NumPy, I needed to bring in the image first, then applied, you know, NumPy array as array, convert it from structure into unstructured, into, from unstructured into structure, okay? For NumPy, using NumPy, I needed to use another library to bring in the image, okay? Then I convert it from unstructured into structured, okay? But now with NumPy, with OpenCV, I don't need to do that. That level of formatting has been has been eliminated. They have been eliminated. So you see, with OpenCV now, I don't need to start doing NumPy as array. So just bringing in the image directly from my desktop into my Python environment, it has converted it into a structured data, into a structured data. So now, if I check the type. If I check the type of CVP, okay, I check the type for of CVP, you see it is coming in as a NumPy ND array. Let me plot it for you. I'll plot it plt dot um, plt dot IM show, and I'll put it CVP in there. Okay, you see the color formatting is different. Okay, so the, this is not the color format. This is not the color format for normal color format is RGB. Okay, normal co color format is RGB. So normal color format is R, G, and B. But OpenCV, OpenCV get comma, he has one small comma. Okay, OpenCV uses what we call BGR. Okay, BGR. Okay, uses BGR. Okay, so you would need to, as a professional, you need to, as a data scientist, you now need to convert it from BGR to RGB, from BGR to R, G, and B. So, so that's the only thing that you need to do. That's the only extra step that you need to do. You will still need to convert it. Okay, sorry. Okay. You need to convert it, convert, okay, from RGB, to BRG, and it's a very simple step. It doesn't take too much time, all right? But that's where I'm going to draw the curtains for today. Anyways, um, so let me just quickly show you what how that is being done. Okay, before we do that, I'll show you something else before we call it today. I'll show you something very interesting, okay? So all you need to do to convert the picture, okay? It's very simple. So I would say PIX, which is PIX underscore C, equals to CV2 dot CVT color. Okay. And I'll say, what's the name of the picture? CV peak. Okay. Comma. And I'll say CV2 dot color, all capital letter, underscore, BGR, BGR to RGB. It's as simple as that. So with this, I'll convert that picture so peaks. So if I now if I visualize, I'll visualize it real quick. Okay. I'll visualize it real quick. So I'll say PLT dot I am show. Okay. And I'll put peaks, peaks underscore C. Okay. So I have an error here somewhere. CV2 dot CVT color. Okay. So it's capital C, capital C, capital C, capital O. Okay, conversivity on PL, what am I writing? PLT, I think I'm moving too fast. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, sorry that. So you see now it has converted the picture from BGR into RGB. Okay, so NumPy, OpenCV is a lot faster. It's a lot faster. So if I'm using NumPy, I will need to bring in the image. I will need to do the conversion myself and so on and so forth. But using OpenCV, all right, 
he did the conversion for me right off the bat, right from the beginning, from that importation phase, it converted the unstructured data into structured data. And then to just start, I could do the conversion from the column, which is from BGR to RGB. So it's still the same, don't get it twisted. Don't say it, it is RGB. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. So using rather than using this format, OpenCV, OpenCV is using B, which is blue, okay, G, which is still green, okay, and uh, R, which is red. So basically, it turned it over the way it is, okay. It's just like it's a scattered format, okay. So that's what OpenCV works with. But majority of the picture that we work with are in RGB. So the only conversion you need to do is to convert it from BGR to RGD. It's as simple as that. So once you've done that, you find out that you have a normal picture. You have a normal picture. It means you can actually do it from the beginning. You can actually state that it should come in as RGB. You can actually state from the beginning, come in as RGD. If I had done that, you will not understand. You will not. If you won't, you won't enjoy the process when you try to do it yourself, okay? So I needed to show you that. So when you start doing your own image processing in the future, you'll remember that OpenCV works with VGR rather than RGB, okay? So now, the last thing I'm going to do, the last thing I'm going to do, you know, image, when you're talking about face, facial detection, facial detection, so let's say facial detection, okay? Facial detection, okay? So I worked on a project, this was in the peak of, uh, what do you call it, of COVID-19. So I built, that was what really led me to computer vision, image processing and all that, okay? So, you know, during COVID-19, the office, majority of the guys coming into the office, so I used to work with, the, you know, one of the largest logistics firms. So we had a lot of warehouse people that are coming into to work, work warehouse, okay? All right, during COVID, okay? So I wanted to build a system that will be able to detect that people are wearing their face mask, wearing face masks. So everybody that's working at least, to, it was a regulation we all know. That every time you enter, you know, you must be, entering in the public space, you must wear a face mask. So I wanted to build a system that will be able to detect people that are wearing a face mask. I mean, even before you enter, you need to show that you're wearing your face mask before you can access the warehouse. So now you need to be able to detect the person's face, first off. That's the first foundation. Before you know if you're wearing a face mask or not, you need to be able to detect. If you need to be able to detect the person's face. First off, then you can start to detect the face mask. Okay? So you see facial detection, all right? You, you, see, it, you see this person here, all right? You see the box around the person's face on the picture. And even on the card, okay? You see it's detecting the person's face, okay? So there are a lot of applications where you're using OpenCV. And I'll show you some, I'll show you some, even the ones with data analytics. I'll show you some of the projects that people have worked on, okay, using OpenCV. Now, facial detection is one very, very broad thing, okay? So foundation, you need to be able, you see that majority of the detection projects that you see here, they kept, they are drawing on the person's face. They draw on the person's face. So you see this one, there's a drawing on the person's face. This one, the drawings on the person's face. This one is another kind of drawing you put on the person's face. So every time you're detecting, you need to draw to say that this is what I am detecting. Okay? It's just like you teaching a child, A, B, C. Okay? So A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. Okay? Now you remove the words and you put cat alone. Okay? All right, and you tell the person, point to cut for me. Point, you need to tell the person to point. So you need to tell the child, point to this one. So I know that you're correct, okay? So when you're doing image process, when you're doing image face detection, for example, it can be detecting another thing if you don't draw. So if you're seeing a face, draw on that face. If it's a face that you're seeing, draw on face. Let me know that you're detecting a face, okay? All right, so that's why you'll see a lot of drawing. You'll see a lot of drawing when you are dealing with facial detection or any form of detection. All right. So now let me draw on our face. Let me quickly do a drawing. Okay. It's going to be manual. Okay. It's going to be manual, but you can draw 
on the fix. Okay, it's going to be manual. But when we get to the automatic aspect, okay, <laughs> you'll see that it can actually be automated using machine learning. Okay, all right. So now quickly, I'm just going to take the code base. I'm just going to take the code base and I'll plan it out for you to understand. I would explain it, but we don't have enough time. So I'll just quickly run through it, okay? All right, so um, let me take out this. So I would explain it better, okay? I'll explain this better, okay? Okay, all right, so this is the picture. I'm gonna just take this one out also. Okay, I'll come back to it anyways. So to draw on the face, let me quickly do that, to draw on the face. So I want to draw a face. I want to draw, let's say, let me start with Adesa, okay? So I want to draw a box on Adesa's face. I want to draw a box on Adesa's face. And I also want to draw a box on my own face. I want to draw a box on my own face. So you see, when you want to draw on a face like this for detection purposes, to say this is Adesa, this is a Femena, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you need to, you know, the things that you need to do is you need to know these two things. PT1, let me use a black pen, sorry. You need to know PT1 and PT2. So PT basically starts for points. So point one, one, and point two. Okay? All right? So point one and point two. Point one is the top left corner. Top left corner. Okay? All right? And point two is the bottom right corner, bottom right corner. Okay, all right. So point one, top left corner. So if you know the top left corner, if you know the top left corner, and you know the bottom right corner. So those are the two points that Python needs. Okay, so if you know the top left corner, and you know the bottom right corner, you can draw a box easily. So what Python will do is to, let me use a red pen. What Python will do is to connect, draw a line, stop at where this one stops, join it, run from here again, stop at where this one stops, and join them together, okay? So the only two things Python needs is the top left corner and the bottom right, bottom right corner. Top left corner, TLC, and bottom right corner. So looking at Adesa's face, for example, looking at Adesa's face, I need to know the top left corner, which is somewhere here. I'll use this place here. Okay. And bottom right corner is somewhere here. Okay. The coordinates. Okay. So if I want to do this now, okay, it says the width first. Width is number one, then the height number two. So width first. So when you look at the width, it's somewhere here. So I would say maybe 790, 790, all right? And over here, when you look at the bottom right corner, so let's just say about 250, okay? So 790 by 250. Let me use a black pen rather. So that is 790. Let me just clean up everything, sorry. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. So let me draw a black, okay? So top, top left corner, and bottom right corner. So this right here is about 790. So if I draw this a dotted line all the way down, you see this is 790, 790, okay? Now if I draw a dotted line from this side, okay? So you see this is also about, let's say 270, okay? Let's just say about 270, 270. So basically bottom right B, bottom right corner, is equals to 790 by 270. Then the top left corner, okay, is equals to what? Uh, let me just say, let's say 50, okay? I'll say 50 just for the sake of it. So let me just start from here, 50, okay? And all the way down here, if I take it down to this place, this will be five, let's say 580-ish, okay? Or five, let's say 560. Okay, so top left corner will be 560 by, uh, what, 560 by 50. Okay, 560 by 50, this is 50 over here, 560, okay? So this is for our data. 
Okay, this is for a diesel to detect a diesel phase, to draw on a diesel phase. So let me quickly put it in. Okay, let me quickly put it in. So the picture is um, Pixie. Okay, is the name of the picture. Pixie. Draw on Pixie. So point one, let me just zoom it back to where it was. Okay, so point one is basically, point one is the top left corner, top left corner. So that is 560, okay, by what's 50, okay? Point two is 790, 790 by 250, 270, sorry, 270. So this color, the color is the color of the box. So if you see some boxes are green, some of them are blue, this one is green, some of them are yellow, some of them are light green. So you can use any color of your choice, really. So for our data zone, let's use red, okay? So 255, then I'll put zero and zero. So that goes back to RGB, okay? That goes back to RGB, okay? Now the thickness is the thickness of the line. So I'll leave it at five. So this right here is a DAZA, okay? So I'm gonna do for my own also, I'm gonna do for mine, okay? So I'll delete this, okay? And let me do for mine. So I'll copy for a DAZA zone, and I will copy and paste it down here, yeah? okay? So this is for Ifemena, Ifemena. And I want you guys to guess this, okay? Not guess, but work with me on this one again. So I want to draw a face. I want to draw a box of my own face, okay? I want to draw a box of my own face. So the top left corner is what I need and the bottom right corner. So now dotted line, take a dotted line from here, okay? All the way down to the bottom. So let's say this one will be about four, let's say four, 420 maximum. Let's say 420, all right? We can always adjust it, it's adjustable, all right? And this one, okay, let's say about two, 230, let's say 230, okay? That's the bottom, so the bottom right corner, okay, is what's 420 by 230. Top left corner, Dotted line again, and dotted line downwards. So this is this is on the other top left corner is equal to let's say about two twenty two ten two ten by let's say about fifty also. So we use fifty for data. I'll use fifty for my own too. All right. So basically, that's all I need to draw a line. Okay. So let me clean up. Let me just quickly type it in. Top left corner, which is the top top left corner would be 210, 210, top left corner, yeah, 210 by 50. Okay, and over here we have 420 by 230, 420, 420 by 230. Okay, so color is, I'm not gonna use red, let me use green for my own. Okay, I'll use green, so 255. Okay, so don't forget it's RGB. It stands for RGB. So R, G, and B. That's what you have here. R, G, and B. So R, for Adesa, so you see I gave it 255. So 255, 255. Zero for green, zero for blue. So this will give you a red because the others are blank, zero, zero. So now for my own, I give my own 255 for green and zero for blue, zero for red, meaning that give me a green color. That's basically what I'm doing, okay? Now let's let's see it. Let's see what I've done, all the things I've talked about so far, okay? So now if I run this, you see now it has drawn a box on a Adesa and my face. It's not, like I said, it's adjustable. You can always readjust the coding, the numbers and all that. But ideally, you will not be doing this manually. Okay, you'll be doing this autom automatically. So I'm going to show you quickly, all right, with that, what, what you'll do when you get to the program. If you, uh, you know, you're interested and you're looking to get it started, I'm going to walk you through what you will do. All right, so I'm going to go to the guys that started in January because they, they just completed their classes, okay? And I'll show you what they did in class. I'll show you the projects that they worked on in class, okay? So um, computer vision, so you see it here, uh, sorry, computer vision, okay, project, computer vision project, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. 
Okay. So let me show you this one here. View materials. All right. I would do the. Let me show show you this in a few seconds. So you see, this is what some of the kind of projects that you work on. And you know, like I mentioned at the start, real time detection, not just auto, not the manual work. What we just did is just you understanding the process. But now taking that understanding and taking it into domain specific areas, that's what we're going to be working on. So this right here is an and detection program and you know and detection okay. program. Okay. So you see this. I'm just going to rewind. Let me run this again. Okay. So I run from the top. That's what I'm doing now. So you, you can see, see this now. Analytics and detection. Okay, of the top. The session level we just did. You can see. And you see, this is detecting my hands in real time. This is detecting my hand in real time. So, and you can use this for quite a number of applications. For example, you know, sign language detection. Okay. Converting and gestures into sign language, into what I call um, language. Okay, so using sign language, but converting it from sign language into text, for example, you could do that. So if you're detecting the ants. So the first thing is being able to detect the ants, first off. The other, another, another project, another sample project you're going to work on is the pose detection project. Okay, pose detection project. So I'm just going to do this in, just give me a second, it's loading up. Okay, so I'm just going to take it to the end because that's what you're concerned about. You can do. So you see, so this is detecting my face. Okay, you've learned something. You can do it. You can talk on that. Right. So okay. this is detecting a full body, full body posture. So one application that I built was, or we didn't scale, we didn't move out, was your perfect form when you go to the gym. So detecting your form when you're in the gym, for example. So it's going to detect you. Okay. And there are different kinds of exercise. So take, for example, you want to do a push-up. There's a right way of doing a push-up. So it's going to detect your full body, your posture, and your form when you're doing a push-up. So there are so many applications to, that's just one application. There are so many other applications that you could use it for. Okay, so for people that have back posture and so on and so forth. Even take, for example, look at the cup. Look at me at the moment. Just take a look at me. So this is what you're seeing on the screen. This right here is the analytics, but it's a virtual background, okay? But now you're asking yourself, how is how does Zoom know that my face should not be blown out? It blows out every other thing. My virtual background, this is my office. I'm going to turn off my wife, my... I'm going to turn off... Okay, now I can't even... Let me see if I can do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to choose virtual background and I'm going to say none for now. And you find out that it is literally just a background. But when I go back to my virtual background, how does Zoom know that they shouldn't blow out my picture? Okay, so if I put what you see now, so this is where you start to use your full body pose. Even if I move backwards, okay, you still see that it's detecting only my body, blows out the whole background but keeps my body intact. So that's exactly what this project is working on. There are so many applications to this particular aspect. You'll still do facial detection projects. There are a ton of projects you work on, put it on your portfolio, put it to your name, and so on and so forth. So you know, these are the kind of things that you need to do to get started. Start from the foundation, keep growing within that foundation, and get better at what you're doing and what you've done, okay? So those are the things that you would you will take a look at, you will work on, okay? And uh, you see quite a number of people. Let me show you some of the guys. So you see, these are the participants. So you see them. This is the ARM detection program, ARM detection projects, okay, that was submitted by one of the, you know, you see it here, our uh, ADDG, okay? So let's look at, let's look at the post detection project that, they worked, that she worked on. So you see the full post detection, okay? And she did this herself, not us. This is, we just teaching out the process and she able to replicate the process itself. So the key thing for you to know is the foundation and grow from there, okay? So I'm going to take a look at somebody else so you know that multiple people come with multiple videos and all that, okay? So some of them, they submitted their GitHub, their uh, repository, so it's difficult for me to check it out. But anyways, those are the kind of things that you will get to work on. You know, build your own project yourself, get your own hands-on skill, and basically that is it. 
Okay, so the key thing, transforming structured data into unstructured data. So if you've enjoyed yourself today, please guys drop a one in the chat. If time today, anyways. Okay, if you've had a wonderful time, put it in the chat, guys. Put it in the chat chats. Okay, fantastic. Let's go. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. Keep the one coming. Keep the ones coming. Keep the ones coming. All right. So, anyways. For like I mentioned, it always seems impossible until you start. It always seems difficult. Looking at image processing in Python, a lot of people would think like it is overly technical. Yes, there's some technicality to it, no doubt about that. But the key thing is, if you start today, you would actually, in the next couple of days, you cannot be the same way you are when you start. And that's exactly what we've had over time in terms of people getting started and excelling. Like so start the most difficult. The, the most difficult part for you, you know, for most people, is to start most times. So take a look at Tony. Take a look at Uluwatosi. So Tosi works as a fraud analyst with one of the top financial banks in the UK. Also, Tony works as a benefit analyst with the UN and NHS. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to show us Tosi. Hello. And I'm going to Hello. give me a second. Um, Jedidaya, um, confirm if you can hear. If you can hear my screen. If you can hear me. If you can hear the presentation. Not yet. Hello, my name is Oluwato Sinugule. Um, yeah, we can hear him now. The cohort with Tenalytics. Uh, I just got a job as a fraud analyst. So my role as a fraud analyst is to investigate and prevent uh, fraud on credit cards. I got this job after I joined Tenalytics. Uh, the mentorship session, the CV review sessions, these sessions were very, very helpful in me getting this role and I had an interview prep as well. All these were highly instrumental in me getting the job and I'm really grateful for the analytics. Thank you. Hi, Femi, now we can't hear you. All right, so, and that's exactly what we need to talk about. It always seems impossible until somebody else goes ahead and do it, then everybody wants to start. But the key thing is, there's enough room for everybody to start, okay? So, and now this is just two among so many other people that have gotten jobs, okay? This is just two among so many other people that have gotten their own jobs. So I'm going to just talk about data science. So the data science training program, end to end, is by far one of the you know one of the reasons why you become a data scientist. Okay, and it's not just the regular data science program that you find outside. It's called the full stack data science program for a reason, and I'm going to explain it. Okay, I'm going to explain everything. So the training program is 100% online. You do it virtually, 100% working on projects, interacting with your facilitators, gaining experience, working on the internship, everything, everything is done online virtually, okay? So you get hands-on practical session. It's an hands-on practical session with, you know, projects and so on that you get to work with. Just imagine what we did in class, just about, you know, roughly almost two hours, roughly over one hour, almost two hours anyways, okay? See what we're able to achieve in class. Now imagine, you know, an immersive sessions, you know, different sessions where you're working on different projects, okay? Now, you would have over 20 life classes with over 50 topics that will be covered, okay? And I'll show you the topics in a, in a few seconds. Now, 100% job visibility, I would also talk extensively on how we can help you land your dream job in data science, data analytics, and so on, okay? Industry relevant certification would also be gotten upon completing the training program. Last but not the least, 10 projects will be added to your portfolio. 10 projects, over 10 projects will be added to your portfolio. Now, these 10 projects, where are they going to cover? I'm going to explain them now. Okay. So, most people on the call are looking to become a data scientist. They want to get a job, they want to learn the skill and actually learn a job in data science. But how do they start? How should you start? The first thing you need to learn is statistics, guys. The first thing you need to learn is statistics. Well, this statistics is not like the statistics that you did in secondary school that you found very difficult to understand, to conceptualize, all right? It was when I started data science, to be honest with you, that's when I really understood the reason 
for mean, median, and mood. Mean, median, mood. So the median, okay, for example, is a middle number. When I was in university and secondary school, I never knew the reason why I needed to get the middle number. So I have a bunch of numbers and I'm getting the middle number. Why do I need to get the middle number? I don't know. But if they ask me the question in school, I know how to go about it. Do you understand? Well, the reason why, and that's why I was talking today in today's session, know the why. The moment you know the why, it becomes very easy for you. So you're going to learn statistics, not like the way you did in secondary school, university, but in a more business-related environment where you understand the impact of statistics in the business. So standard deviation, variance, you know, measure of central tendency, measure, measure of asymmetry, inferential statistics, descriptive statistics, and so on and so forth. How this plays out in an actual business world, that's what you get to understand. All right. And then after that, you move into Excel and Tableau for descriptive, descriptive, diagnostic, and predictive analytics. So we talked about all the things that the data analyst does, the data scientist does. So you will learn how to do it. So you'll be able to work as a data analyst. You'll be able to do the work of a data analyst. And you even go one step further, okay? So you'll be able to use Excel and Tableau for descriptive and diagnostic analytics, okay? But now the good thing also is you will be able to do predictive analytics on top of that, okay? So you'll be able to carry out what we call predictive analytics using Excel and using Tableau. And this is one of the reasons why we call it the full stack data science program. The reason being that you will cover Excel, you will cover Tableau as a data scientist. So you get to use different tools for prediction, for analysis, for statistical modeling, and so on and so forth. So it's a very interesting and exciting experience for me getting started. So regardless of anywhere you find yourself, some organizations are using Tableau, some of them are using Excel. In regardless of anywhere you find yourself, you will be able to survive. Okay, you'll be able to carry out your data science activities. Now, after that, you learn SQL, structured query language for database manipulation, data query, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, the next thing you're going to learn is Python. So you see what we did today was based off Python. Okay, you're going to learn Python. Then, last but not the least, you will now learn machine learning and computer vision. Okay, so this is where you now start to implement machine learning algorithms. You start to deploy computer vision, okay, in, on different types of projects, okay? And last but not the least, you will become a master data scientist. You become a master data scientist, okay? So basically, that's exactly what you will go through, all right, getting started in, you know, in data science. So you start from, you learn Excel, you learn Power BI, you accept Power BI. You learn statistics, you learn Excel and Tableau, you learn SQL, you learn Python, you learn machine learning and computer vision. And last but not least, you become a master data scientist. Somebody was asking about, what about my um, Power BI? So what we do is to incorporate what we call, we incorporated what we call Microsoft Fabrics. So you see here, this is what you call Microsoft Fabrics. So the icon that you see here is Microsoft Fabrics. So you would also learn Microsoft Fabrics. So Microsoft Fabrics is a one-stop analytical tool, okay, for the Microsoft Analytics platform, okay? So Power BI, you know, using Power BI service, deployment pipelines, and so on and so forth, everything is embedded in Microsoft Fabrics. So you'll still learn Power BI, like a data analyst, using it for reporting and so on and so forth. So it's still something that will be covered in the curriculum. You would also get to work with AI tools like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot for your analysis, visualizations, and so on. Okay, for programming, for coding, and so on and so forth. So you learn an extensive curriculum, starting from the beginning, statistics all the way to computer vision, NLP, you know, machine learning, and so on and so forth. Okay, very extensive, very very detailed training program. Okay, now what kind of careers would you go to into? once you complete the training program. So you can work as a data scientist, you can work as a data analyst, you can work as a sales analyst, SCM analyst, which stands for supply chain analyst. You can work as a fraud analyst like Tosin. You can work like a pricing analyst, market research analyst, logistics analyst. There are so much roles you can actually apply to, so much, okay? So regardless of any role you find yourself, analytics can be applied to it, you can apply for that role. 
Okay, so data science, data analytics, data fraud analysts, benefit analysts, pricing analysts, so on and so forth. Okay, so on this road alone, I've worked as a supply chain analyst, I've worked as a logistics analyst almost within the same period. Okay, I've also, you know, there's so many roles you could actually take on, to be honest with you. Okay. Now for the internship, okay, one month immersive internship experience where you get to own your skill. Now this particular internship experience, you can add it to your job, you can add it to your experience, okay? And you can claim experience and you can use it in applying for jobs. So you can claim to say that, oh, you're currently working with analytics, okay? And this has been one of the reasons why we've had a lot of people get their job, all right? We've helped people get their job using the internship experience. So you can tell potential recruiters that, oh, I currently work with analytics as a data scientist consultant, and this is what I do. So we'll walk you through the process, and you'll be working on different projects, okay, that will be given to you to own your skills, to own you better in the skills that you have. So why should you train with analytics? All right, the last one hour, the last two hours, I would say, okay, as we've all talking about programming, data science, so on and so forth. Why should you choose us? Why should you trade with analytics and not any other platform? Very simple, all right? They are based off these four, you know, these four points I have right here. Number one is we have an amazing track record. I'm going to show you all our testimonials of people that have gone on to get their jobs within the tech space, working as data scientists, working as data analysts without any prior experience. And like when I said we've done over 2,000, it means, we'll, and I'll show you proof that we've done over 2,000 people of people getting jobs within the tech space, okay? Number two, industry standard facilitators with a standout kind of curriculum. So it's still a curriculum that we've designed for you. It's enough friendly. So we don't even expect you to come in with any experience, any pre, no, no, no knowledge, come in empty, okay? And we have the most robust curriculum that will get you started and walk you through all you need to learn to get you into the data science things. I mean, look at what we did today, all right? Look at what we did today. And even though you might not be able to program, but you understand the process, okay? And that's exactly the standard facilitators that we're talking about. People that have a wealth of experience and can break these concepts, complex concepts, into ABC formats for you to understand, okay? So that's the experience that we bring to bear. People that have experience, people that have deployed this on scale, at scale, I would say, okay? And are coming to willing to train you, to get you started. Those are the kind of people that you will get to work with. Number two, number three is blended training curriculum to accommodate different learning types. I'm a fast learner, I'm a slow learner. Regardless, once you're on a program, everybody moves at the same pace. So when we say blended training, it means a combination of life classes and watch me do it videos. Watch me do it videos. I'm gonna show you those videos. So you see exactly why a slow learner is well, is well accommodated within the training program. So if you're a slow learner today and you feel like, you know, I've trained with other people but every time they're just talking very fast and they're moving very fast and I don't know, I get lost, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. We understand your situation. For me, for example, I'll classify myself as a slow learner. So I need to read something like two, three times. I need to practice like five times for me to understand. I think that's why you know it's easy for me to decipher and also explain certain concepts to people. So so fast learners also will be able to see it in just one second and the other second they are leave the United. So we have those kind of people. But now the key question is how do we keep those two people within the same class? Okay. So we have the life classes and we have something else, what we call the watch me do it video, self-paced bite-sized videos, practical videos that would help you practice at your own pace. So even as the first learner, you will still learn the way a slow learner will learn. Okay? So everybody is working at the same pace. Number four, tailored session to position you for success. Now, how do we tailor you? How do we, how do we tailor you for success within the job market? I'm going to explain to you. Okay? Now, it's a three-layer approach. Three layered approach. Layer one, level one, level two, and level three. Level one is basically where we now start to rebrand you. Okay? So you've been working as a customer service representative. You've been working as a banker. You've been working as a sales rep. You've been doing something entirely different. 
Like, how do we rebrand you? How do we rebrand you to get you that road that you're looking for? That's the expertise that we have. Okay, so number one, the first thing I will do is your CV. We'll revamp your CV, not review, all right? Review is just a very mild one. We'll revamp it. We will bring it down and restructure it back, okay? So all your prior experience, how can you leverage them? Oh, I used to be a teacher. Oh, I used to be a sales consultant. Oh, I used to be a, you know, contractor. Oh, I used to be a bricklayer. As a bricklayer, how can I use my prior experience in data science? Very simple. We'll work with you to do that. All right? The simple thing is just detecting, okay? You analyzing, you detecting, understanding pattern. So as a bricklayer, how can you tailor your CV as a bricklayer to become data science? Very simple. All right? As a bricklayer, I work on different constructions of different buildings, okay? That's my job. That's what I do. The other part is now to infuse analytics in that. That's all you need to talk about. How do you not infuse analytics? Simple. Over the time, we notice a trend of, we notice a trend of the kind of foundation that we do for different buildings, okay? And we found out that some houses are susceptible to flood while others are not. So what I did as an analyst working for this construction company, Okay, all right. Was to analyze different, you know, different houses that were built and the houses that were flooded, understanding the pattern of foundation and rain. Okay, and based on my analysis, I found out that, you know, based on the foundation, the particular foundation type is immune to flood. Houses with this particular kind of foundation don't get flooded. Did you do it? You probably did not do any form of core analysis. Okay, people was just experience. Well, now you've infused a bit of analytics. To show that, okay, my experience, I was able to use analytics or data science to be able to detect foundation types within, you know, within the organization and which is susceptible to flooding, okay? So on, or mode detection, so on and so forth. There's so many things that you can actually do, all right, that you can implement, that you could say you have done. And those are the things that you package yourself as, as a breaking app. You did the thing, okay? You didn't do any science. But now that you've learned science, how can you? implement it in that particular role that you've done. And those are the things that would help you do. Sit down with you, understand your experience and convert this experience into analytical data science experience. So next thing is, um, okay, LinkedIn optimization would help you optimize your LinkedIn. LinkedIn is basically, you know, one-stop shop for recruit, for promoters, for professionals. So you'll notice that a lot of recruiters will go there to search for potential candidates. So you need to optimize your platform, your LinkedIn profile to rank better. So when the recruiter goes on LinkedIn to search, you would appear, okay? They don't need to reach page 44 before your profile will appear, okay? You need to rank on the top numbers of applicants, you know, in, within the job market. Now, the next thing is Upwork optimization for freelancers. Look at it, you work freelance, would we'll optimize your platform, would we'll teach you how to get new projects, would we'll teach you how to explore, okay? How to get new projects, how to compete within the Upwork freelance space, okay? Navigating the job market is, a, is an essential aspect of the training program. Would we'll help you navigate the job market. What kind of roles can you apply for? Where should you apply for roles? Where should you apply for, for remote roles? Where can I apply for remote roles? Where can I apply for tech relocation opportunity? Um, there are so many sessions that would have, you know, help you get started in how to understand the job market and how to navigate the job market. The next part is job and interview preparation. If you have a good CV, the LinkedIn profile is optimized, meaning that recruiters can see you better. You know how to navigate the job market. Trust me, you will get interviews. You will learn, you will get interviews. There's no how we want to do it. Okay. Once you get those interviews, you need to get prepared for those interviews. Now, how do you prepare for those interviews? Simple. Now, you've never done this before. You've never done this before. You've never done any form of um any form of inter job interview for a data science show before. How do you answer those questions? Tell me about a time or let me. Let's meet you. Tell me about yourself. How do you answer that question? Tell me about yourself. We have what we call the seat approach. You talk about your skill first. You talk about your experience. You talk about your achievement. And you talk about the type of person that you are. So it's an acronym. The acronym stands for what? SEAT. Okay. I'm going to use a yellow pen. Okay. The acronym stands for SEAT. SEAT. So skills first. To talk about your skill. Tell me about yourself. Use your skill. You talk about your experience, okay? 
All right, you talk about your achievements and you talk about the type of person that you are. Okay, now situational based question review star. Okay, and there are certain ways you need to talk about this. So star, you talk about your. I'm uh, sorry, you talk about the situation first. Okay, you talk about the task that was performed. You talk about the action that you do, and the result of that project of your analysis of whatever you've done. So there are certain ways you do to answer this question. Certain ways. It's not just generic. Okay, and this is what these are some of the reasons why we've gotten so much success in people learning the job within the tech space, even as beginners. All right, recommendation of letter and reference letter. I spoke about this earlier. You can gain experience during the internship and even during the training program. You can claim work experience from Tenalytics and we can write your recommendation letter. If you're looking to become a data scientist today and you have always been working as a banker, you can't go back to your bank to say you worked as a data scientist there. No, you can't. So what do you do? You need us to stand in for you. So you can claim that experience to say you work with analytics currently as a data scientist and this is what you're going to do when you get into the organization. You will have the skill. You will have gotten the experience. So all you need is just to get a job. And those are the things that we've put in place so it's sure you get that job. Okay? So number, number two is mentorship session. So this is where we bring in experts within the field to come and talk to you, add more value to what we are providing for you. So all the, you know, the key guys within the industry, in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in Nigeria, they come in to come and explain certain concepts, explain how they're able to navigate the job market, explain what you need to do differently, all right? Mentors have come in and have helped people get jobs within the organization, okay? So we have this mentorship session where we bring people together, the eighth one is on the job support. So if you get a job today and you need a bit of support, we will still help you. We will still assist you. So the key thing for you is to get a job. Once you've gotten the job, you're still fine. You're still in the pipeline. You will still have who we will still work with you to get you started or to make you understand your role better. Now, level three is we guarantee interviews. Interviews, not interviews interviews and i'm going to explain how we can actually guarantee you interviews once you go through the training program we guarantee you interviews now the other part okay and how do we do this based off these three aspects so body mentorship session so we said we have two thousand people have gotten jobs these guys are willing to come back all right they reached out last year some of them reached out last year and they became a team uh, all of them wanted to come back to give back. So, oh, I just got a job as a benefit analyst. I just got a job as a data scientist. I just got a job as a data analyst. Oh, I want to come back. I want to help people. I want to help other Nigerians, other Africans get their own dream job. Just the same way the analytics has helped me. So, we have a ton of people that are coming back to give back to the, you know, to the courts, people that are willing to get this started. So you have a lot of mentors. So you have mentors that are experienced in the field. You have people that are just getting started and they just got their jobs. All right, then you can ask, okay, guy, how did you do it? How are you able to do it? Where should I apply for this role? You know, how did you navigate the job market? You can actually have those one-on-one -on -one sessions and so on. Now, the next thing is enhanced internship experience. So we have developed a new brand of internship program or uh, rebranded our internship program to get you that new life experience. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you everything today. All right. And last but not the least, for guaranteed interviews, what well, we are currently working with partner in partnership with some recruitment firms in the UK, in the US, and in Canada. So what we are doing is we're building a job pipeline of recruitment, you know, of people getting recruited from Tenalytics. So once you finish the training program, Recruiters are looking for certain roles in data within the data ecosystem. We recommend you for those roles. Okay, we recommend you for those roles, and that those are the partnerships that we have secured. We are still working aggressively to secure more. All right, the more recruitment firms that we have, the more that people would be able to be recommended for job opportunities. So these are the things that we are putting in place to ensure you get that transition that you need to get you started in your career path. Okay. We talk about remote jobs for you to apply for remote jobs. What I've done is to create you'll see on the on the link here how to get remote jobs. So we've done an extensive video of how to apply for remote jobs. So if I click on this, it's going to take me to a YouTube page. All right, so our YouTube channel where I is a three-hour session on how to get remote job. 
three hours. So it's an it's very very detailed in the sense that it went through, it talks through um it talks through all the sites that you can actually get remote jobs. So currently this is Upwork. Okay, this is Upwork. Me putting you through how to use Upwork. Okay, I used different channels. Okay, different places. Also. All right. Also, there's another one how to get sponsored jobs. Okay. And so on. So all these have been linked in the material. So you'll get all the materials, how to get a remote job, how to get sponsored job. All that will be added. They're all in the material. So all you need to do is when you get the material, click on it and it's going to open up in the in the YouTube, in the YouTube page uh, for you to take a look at. Okay. All right. So that's one aspect of it. Okay. So I'm just going to show you, anyways. I'm still going to show you. For, for people that might be doubting they can get your remote job and they get your remote job. And let me show you quickly. So if you go to builtin.com, which is one of the best sites for remote jobs in the US, okay? So latest tech jobs personalized for you. But anyways, let's just look for the role of a data analyst, okay? Okay, like I mentioned, you can take on the role of a data analyst, you can take on the role of a data scientist. So we'll look for data science, we'll look at data analyst and so on. So now I don't want hybrid in office, so I'm going to switch that off, okay? And I just want pure, pure remote. So you see data analyst, okay? Data science contractor, data analyst, data analyst, data analyst, three days ago, yesterday, two days ago, yesterday, 23 hours ago. This is, you see, these are all roles, currently remote roles in the US. This is just one of the site that you could check out, okay? You could also look at the role of a data scientist, okay? So you see it's your data scientist. And let's take a look at it. Same thing, data science, data science, data scientist, data scientist, data scientist, and so on and so forth. Four days, two days, several days. This is about nine days ago. Yesterday, 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 yesterday 15 days ago, three days ago, so on and so forth. This with Pinterest, staff data scientist. This with Airbnb. Four days ago, remote salary one forty-five to one seventy thousand. So these are all remote jobs that are currently existing at the moment. Okay, um, we also have what we call flex job. Okay, this is another platform for you to get remote job. Okay, flex jobs, remote, it's simply remote jobs. So you see, find genuine remote jobs at companies that get it. These are platforms that you can get remote tech roles data science, data analytics, so on and so forth. There are quite a number of them that you can check out. Even in the UK, I'm going to look at the UK, for example. So for people in the UK, there are rules that you should you should be aiming to get. You should be aiming to get for guys in the UK. All right? So if you look at the role of a data scientist, for example, okay, scientist, okay, all right? Looking at the role of a senior data scientist, you see they are, they are what the rules we call contract rules, okay? Contract rules, okay? That would allow you to earn significantly more, okay? So even in the UK, you should be looking at money for this kind of contract rules where you can actually work and earn significantly. So this is about 600 pounds per day, 600 to 660. This is about 500 to 600 pounds per day. This is about 500 pounds per day. This is about 300 to 350 pounds per day and so on and so forth. So these are jobs that you can actually take on, okay? More opportunities. And the same thing for the guys in Canada also. So if I go to Indeed, okay? There are contract jobs like this also in Canada. All you need to do is search for them, okay? So if you look at data scientists, okay? And I'm just going to search across, okay? Okay, job type. You can see contract rules over here also, and you'll get these contract rules, and you can actually see earn more. Majority of them in in it's not per day, it's gonna be per hour. So you can actually earn as high as 100, 150, 200, 250 dollars an hour. Okay, depending on the contract that you can actually get. Okay, all right. So uh so currently this is about 80 to 85 dollars. Okay, you obviously get some that are significantly higher than that, okay. So there are all these roles, US, UK, you everywhere. The key thing is for you to prepare yourself in getting started. Like I mentioned, it always seems impossible until you get it done. So before we call, before before we talk about this, I just want you to listen to you, Tony. Right, okay. All right. Just wanted you to listen to Tony. It's just about a minute long video. 
All right, talking about how she was able to get a job. And um, I recently got a job as a benefits analyst in the UK. I've come from a medical background as a pharmacist who is interested in, you know, breaking into tech. My first encounter with analytics was on LinkedIn. I joined one of their master class, just one master class where a femina spoke and it just took that master class to convince me. I joined in August and the month after I got a job. To be honest with you, every information skill uh, that I was able to apply to get that job, I owe it to Tenalytics. Tenalytics did a great job and is still doing a great job. They groom you and nurture you from the cradle to you become confident. So my advice for you most importantly, is join be integrated into a platform that empowers you and allows you to easily get that first job all right guys so you see that's how getting a job and there are so many other like i said if you go to ten analytics i'm going to show you where you can get all the testimonials like we have a ton of testimonials so subscribe to our YouTube channel also, so you can get access to all the materials, all the things that we're working on, okay? So if you go here, you see testimonials, okay? Just on the, where, and I'm using my eyes to look for testimonial, testimonials. Hello okay. everyone. So my name is Tino Olatubi. you see all the testimonials Okay, so I just here. finished um, HR analytics with 10 analytics. Okay. For me... Give me a second. Um... Okay, so you see it here. Hi, my name is Eme Betim and I register and for full stack. You see there are quite a number of testimonials in there, people getting their jobs and so on, and they're talking about their experience with analytics and so on and so forth. All right, so tons of guys that have gotten their jobs and start getting started. So the key thing is you starting also, you starting your own career. So we have a course starting next month, the 4th of May, 4th of May, 2024. That's next week, Saturday. So this is the last call for people looking to get it started. Okay, this is the last call for people looking to get it started. So the training program starts on the 4th of May, all right? But we're running a last mile discount for the people that want to register now, okay? So the discount is only available for the first 20 people to register, all right? It's a whooping 33% discount for you to register today. Not tomorrow, not next week. Okay, so if you're able to get 20 people today, that's it done. Okay, so if you're looking to get it started, please register as soon as possible. All right. So essentially, the full amount for the training program, the training program should should cost seven fifty dollars. Okay, that's the actual price of the training program. All right, or okay, or six twenty five, or seven thirty. You know, this is based off exchange rate or nine hundred thousand naira. Okay, so this is the actual full price of the training program. So for people looking to get it started now, we are running a discounted amount for people to get started. Now, that's the discount is not all that you get from getting the discount. You also get to pay in installment. You also get to pay in installments. So rather than paying $750, all right, you could actually pay $500 US dollars. All right, in pounds, that will be 425 pounds. In euros, that is 475 euros. In Canadian dollars, it is 750 Canadian dollars. And in Naira, it is 600,000 Naira. So you're getting a whooping 33% discount. Whooping 33% discount. For only what? For only the first 20 people to register. Only the first 20 people. Okay, so the discount is. $500 or for, for the 425 pounds or 475 euros or 750 Canadian dollars or 600,000 euros. So anyone that works for you, okay? And in terms of installments, you don't need to pay this in full. You can actually pay in installments. So you can pay the first installment today to secure your space in class next week Saturday, okay? So what do you need to secure your space? 400,000 euros. Or 500 Canadian dollars, or 350 euros, or 300 pounds, or 350 dollars. That's all you need to secure your space in class next week Saturday. 
get started, secure your job, secure your future. This is due. This is uh, we're going into the May court. So you see, we're almost heading towards the middle of the year already. So if you're looking to get it started and you want to get a job before the end of the year, this is the best time to start. This is the best time to start. So once you make your payment, this guarantee, once you make the first payment, it allows you to start to get you registered for the training program. Okay. And then the second payment comes one month. You see here, one month into the training program. Is that not wonderful? One month into the training program. So you don't need to start looking out for $500 to pay all at once or to £425 or £475. All right. You don't need that to get started. Okay, what do you need? You need to pay the first amount. Okay, you need to pay the first amount to secure your discount, to secure your sports in the training program. Now, let me walk you through how you're going to go about it. Okay, so you see my colleagues, are put, they've pasted the link in the chat. Okay, you'll see the main stack dot me file. You see, main stack dot me slash 10 analytics, I wrote analytics. So once you click on that, it takes you to the web page where you would see the, you see, Tenalytics Enrollment Center, okay? Tenalytics Enrollment Center. So once you scroll down, okay, you see, you can get access to all program brochures, all the program brochure, you can get access to everything. So you see the discount in there, all right? Early bed discount available, you see that. So, and you see the price for all the courses that we're running at the moment, every information is there, okay? So for direct transfer, if you want to do a direct transfer, okay, so you're currently in the UK or you you want to pay a direct transfer, you can use the pound account to do a direct transfer, okay? Even in US, Canada, you could use the US and Canada account number to make a transfer, okay? Um, if you're in Europe, you're in Germany, you're in France, you're in Belgium, you're in Norway, and you're looking to make payment to direct transfer, please go ahead and to make the transfer to the Euro account details. And if you're in Naira, looking to make payment, please go ahead to make Naira payments to the Webman Bank account, Naira Internet Analytics Webman Bank account. So you see, for guys doing direct transfers, once you click on the link, that's literally the first couple of things that you're going to see, direct transfer. Select the account numbers that you want to send it to you and your brand, you're good to go. Okay. Now for people that want to pay using the card payment, using card payments, okay? You see, all you need to do is go to Full Stack Data Science, Full Stack Data Science Program. Click on it, okay? And it's going to take you to a page where you can use your card to make payment. So this part, this is main stock, okay? And uh, you see suggested price currently is £425, £425, okay? So this is £425, okay? Well, currently the discount for this, you see that's the total discount, 425. So if you're in the UK, this is 425 pounds. Now, if I change it, I could all you need to do is pay 300 dollars So all you need to pay is 300 pounds. I mean, so you can change it to 300 pounds and proceed to pay. So that's all you need. So you can actually adjust the price on the fees that you see there, okay, in order for you to get started. Okay. So all you need to do is go to the link for card and online payment. You'll see the full stack data science program. Click on it. It takes you to the main stack page and then you can make your payment. So rather than paying 425, you can change that amount to 300 pounds and you can proceed to queue for the course itself. Once you've made your payment, I can see two people. All right, thanks a lot. I can see guys telling me that they've made payment. All right, thanks. All right, so once you make payment, guys, okay, the next step is, is also very important. So once you make payment, you see this, upload your receipts. Upload your receipts here. Upload your receipt here. So click on that, and it's going to take you to this page where, you know, it's a Google form where you can upload your receipts. So just take a screenshot of the payment description. So rather than sending me here, rather than sending me private chat, chatting me here with the uh, evidence of payment, all you need to do is go to main stack, click on upload your receipts. Okay. Click on upload your receipts and just fill in the information. So I'm just going to say if you're at analytics.io. Go to com. Okay. Go to com. All right. Next. 
okay, type of payment. So is it full payment, initial payment, or top of balance, you know, initial first installment, okay? If you pay in full, full, full amount or full payment. Initial payment, I'm going to click on next, okay? Please know that after receiving the welcome kit, all balance payment is due on the 30th of May, one month in advance, okay? All right, so if you start now, you have one month to pay the balance. So next, okay, you put in your full name, your name, your email, your registration email, and so on and so forth. So basically just registering you for the training program. Okay, so you are getting 33% discounts for the guys that are looking to get it started for the main code. 33% discount, that's a huge chunk out of what you should ideally be paying, okay? So all you need to do, pay some amount this evening and you are never able to upload the receipt. All you need to do is just literally come back to this particular link, okay? I'm gonna send the link to you again. Take that link, okay? All right? And click on the link. Once you click on the link, it's going to take you to this page. You'll see payment registration form. After making payment, kindly upload your receipt using the below button. So click on this link and it's going to give, it's literally gonna take you to the Google form where then you put in the information, your personal information, and then you can get registered for it. Okay. Can someone pay in three installments? On some unique cases, we can. So all you need to do is send an email. Okay. You need to send an email for us to do that for you. So send an email to nene at Tenalytics. Tenalytics. Dot I so if you want to leave your ticket for you know paying three installment, all right, you can send an email to Nene at Analytics or request them for that. So she's the one in terms of finances that will be able to work something out for you. Okay, so please send a message to send an email to Nene at Analytics or I or Ikechuku. All right, so I paid 250000 as a first installment and it was for the this IWD month of March. I was reminded email a few days back to pay the balance da, 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 da. Uh, different what I paid for um Ube you please I, I'm not sure I'm not sure I'll be able to the contact person was uh, Ibrahim and Nene yes so do you know what you do for me send Nene an email also so Nene adds 10 analytics on so send an email to 10 analytics and uh, Nene at analytics to IL okay please send an email all right and we'll take it up from there okay you could also copy me in the email. Uh, that would be if you may now at standalytics.io. Okay. You can just copy me in the email for me to, to be in the link. Okay. All right. So, um, Ube, Uye, B, Sandra, just copy, send us an email and you know, just copy me in the email and I would, I would speak up with that with you. Okay. All right, so for people that are looking to get started, also I wanted to show you the classroom quickly in just a few minutes. Okay, um, I'm not sure why this is persistently here. Okay, all right, so I wanna show you the Google Classroom, okay, quickly in just about a minute or so. So for people asking about where materials, like I mentioned, you have lifetime access to the materials, lifetime access to the materials. So, now take for example the guys that started if you're the guys that started in the month of april let's take a look at what they've done so far the guys that started this month april the month of april let's see what they've been able to achieve so far this month okay so they started on the fourth of you know, they started on the on the fourth of april if i'm correct okay just looking at sixth of april sixth of april so you see this is the introduction video, okay? So these are what we call the watch, the self-paced watch me do videos. So when I talked about a blended training curriculum, blended training curriculum, where you can learn at your own pace and everybody, fast learners, slow learners, everybody learn at your own pace. This is what we call the watch me do it videos. So you see type of analytics, for example, that we talked about today, you know, this is an 11 minute video, almost a 12 minute video. Okay, talking about the types of analytics. All right, this okay, talking about the types of analytics and you know, covered using practical, using you know, real life scenarios. Okay, everything was discussed using the types of analytics in there. Okay, so this is self paced material for people to be able to do it by themselves, for people to be able to understand certain concepts more visually. All right, 
So once you get the introduction to materials, okay, you get the introduction to video, introduction video, all right? You have the onboard session. And it's the reason why we usually close registration by Tuesday of the week the training program is starting. So by Tuesday maximum, training is canceled, like no, reg no more registration for the awards, okay? So no more registration by Tuesday. So if you want to register, register as soon as possible so you can, you know, attend the, you know, the onboard session. So we have the onboarding session and you find out that every session is recorded. Every single session is recorded. So that is Jedediah, one of the you know program associates from from Analytics. We can walk you through the onboard onboarding session. Basically, all right. Now from onboarding session, you have your introductory class, the first class, the weekend class, the first weekend class, and every session is recorded. Every single session is recorded. Now, this is the live class and it was taken by um, Precious, okay? So this is the live class. What was the first quarter? What was the first quarter of 2027? I was, sorry. I was the first quarter of 2024. So breaking it down, you know, basic concepts into practicality. You know, this is just you getting started. And this is the reason why we said it is designed for beginners. People are just looking to get it started. This is the best platform for you. Okay, because if you start from the beginning, understand the regimen, understand the why before you start even doing anything too practical. So now you now move into the watch me do it videos. You see, week one, Excel for analytics, watch me do it videos, so WMDI videos. So you see it here, introduction to Excel, data cleaning functions, and Excel toolkit. So even if you're a beginner, you've never used Excel before, we'll take you through the overview. Okay, introduction to Excel. Let me just show you a tip of it. Okay, I'm going to show you a tip. Okay, so let's play, I'll play this for you. And you see, even if you've never used Excel before, and that is the reason why we said, if you're a beginner, you are in the right place. You are in the right place. Because we start from the beginning. We start from the very beginning. What is a row? What is a column? So you see, what is a cell? Telling you what a cell is, what is a cooler, what's a row. So all the foundational things that you need to learn is covered, okay? All the foundation, all the things that you feel like you might struggle with, everything has been covered, okay? So all the basic foundation, so introduction to Excel, data cleaning, which is an essential skill set of a data scientist, okay? You would learn it, see it here. Introduction to data cleaning, clean and value functions, substitute function, left and right search functions, unique functions, stream functions, and so on, okay? And then you now have a live class. You would have a live class. So you see this data cleaning with Excel. This is the first live class. Okay. So you see data cleaning material. I'm going to show you. So everything that we work on are case studies. So your live classes measure, they're all case study based. They are case study based live classes. So you see, let me show you the case study for this one here. So now the background. The e-commerce company has been experiencing an increase in product return leading to higher operational costs and decreased customer satisfaction. Okay? So you see, there's a business case already. And this is what? This is your first practical class. Your first practical class. This is just week one of you started. You're already doing projects. You're already working on projects already. Okay? So the data science team has been assigned a project to analyze product returns to identify trends and patterns that, that could help improve customer satisfaction. Task, and as a junior data scientist, you are task, your, task, you, your task is to clean and pre-process the data, the data set to ensure its reliability and suitability for analysis. So essentially, that's what you now start to work on, okay? And that's what the project is on. Guess what? The sessions are recorded. So even if you missed the session or if you did not get certain things in the live class, you can always go back to revisit it. You can always go back to revisit those key areas. So all sessions are recorded, fully recorded, okay? In order for you to get started. And that's the way to structure. You have to watch me do videos, okay? So introduction to statistics, categorical variable visualization, numerical variable visualization, and you have dashboard, okay? And you'll be able to build your own dashboard, okay? By the second life class, you'll be able to build your own dashboard. So let me just take it to the end so you can see exactly, you know, how dynamic 
the dashboard would look like. You'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to build this within the first two weeks of you starting the training program. Okay, so that's our dynamic. You might feel like, oh, is that not, is it possible? Well, exactly. You see, here, week two, week two, watch me do videos. All right, and you see the guys doing the ads. Okay, and I'll show you some of the, uh, what do you call it? Some of the uh, project and so on. So this is their live class. Okay, this is the session session recorded. Okay, so the session is recorded. Excel dashboard completion video. So let's show you. Let me show you the final dashboard. So this is the dashboard they built in class. This is the dashboard they built in class today. In that that was last weekend. Okay, so you see those are the things that you get to. And this week, what are they doing? So you see they did the um watch statistics. Okay, the core aspect of statistics. That's what they did. And you see the live class again, statistics live class. You have all the materials in there. And now they're going into predictive analytics using Excel to do prediction. So when they say something is an immersive training program, it takes you end to end of what you need to learn. So let me just show you a little bit of the class on, the little bit of class on forecasting. So I'm going to just use the simple linear regression using for forecasting in Excel, using Excel to do that. Okay. Give me a second. Let it load about. So you would learn all the key practical things that you need to learn in order for you to be able to work on this project. Okay. So you see all the aspect of predictive analytics using all the techniques that are available for prediction. You start to use them. And this is you using Excel to do predictive analytics. Okay. And you'll be able to do yours. And this are, that's the beauty of you staying with analysis because you see a lot of people doing the same thing. You'll be with a community of people, learners that are doing fantastically well. All right. So if you go on LinkedIn today, I'm just going to open my my web browser and I'm yeah. going to show you. Okay. I'm going to show you this. Okay. So if I come here and I go to LinkedIn, all right, you'll see quite a number of, okay. Okay, so if you come to turn if you just go to LinkedIn today, you'll see a ton of our people. You know, see, uh, this is Miriam doing a project, worked on this project, and the project basically is employee turnover. I should presented it online. You see a ton of our guys doing great stuff on LinkedIn. So if you go on LinkedIn, search Ten Analytics, you would see quite a number of people working on different projects at every time, at every point in time. So, you know, um, the key thing for you is starting. The key thing is for you to start. The key thing is for you to start. All right. So be a part of the first set of people to take advantage of our discount, of the discount that is available at the moment. Okay. Um, any question, guys? Any question? Any question? Any question? I will take a few minutes to take questions, and then we can call it a day. Okay, we can call it today. Have you guys had a wonderful time? Put a one in the chat today if you had a great time. And if you want to speak, if you want to ask the questions, you could raise up your hand and I'll get you to unmute yourself. So Vivian, fantastic. Thank you a lot for that. I'm happy you enjoyed yourself. I also did enjoy myself today. Uh, thanks a lot for taking our time. It's the weekend. It's late. Your time, or depending on your time zone, it's late or it's in the early evening for some people and you're able to attend the session. So thank you very much. You guys are the real VIP. Okay. And for the long story short, I'll be looking forward to having you guys in the session in the main class itself. There's so much for you to learn. There's so much opportunity. And um, I'm hoping that you will start with us to take advantage of this opportunity. Starting now is the best thing that you can do. All right. And those are the things that you know I would like to share with you before I call it a day, since there are no much questions. So some of the projects you get to work on, okay, these are real life case studies, real life experience that we have adjusted to suit you for learning purposes. So you see the first one, hotel reservation case study. So you see here, um, hotel reservation essentially, the hotel was experiencing, they are experiencing a lot of cancellation. So you know, obviously, when you cancel your hotel they charge you a, a tiny bit, okay? Maybe like 10% or 10% of your money is gone, okay? Or the booking fee is gone, okay? But guess what? The the the, the hotel, uh, so hotel, yeah, the hotel is losing out big time because they would prefer you to come to the room, use the amenities and get paid for it, okay? Rather than them taking money for cancellation fees, okay? 
So the organization in this particular hotel, they are trying to figure out what to do to stop it. So you see it here, you have been employed as a data scientist to explore the data and provide them with some insight and recommendation. How can they detect who is going to cancel, okay? And who is not going to cancel their booking, hotel booking, okay? Jumbo e-commerce, for example, another case study. These are e-commerce sales and forecasting analysis. See here, yeah? as a data scientist, you have been tasked with the developing a sales business dashboard that provides a comprehensive regional overview of the company's operations and includes sales forecast. Okay, so that's you doing a bit of forecast, predictive analytics. So Daniel and Son also the same thing. You know, Daniel and Sons are facing stifling competition from other electronic retailers in the area, and they need to stay ahead of the curve to maintain their competitive advantage. To do this, they want you to spool the necessary data from the database. So this is you using SQL, okay? And then analyze the sales against competitors and provide answers to the following questions, okay? So that's you using SQL. So soulless online project, okay? So you see it here, now, um, this is an online streaming service. So you see you're getting experience from e-commerce to retail to hotel to hospitality. You're getting experience across different projects. Okay, so you're also going to do real estate, which is Crusader Homes. Homes. Okay? You're also going to get another e-commerce project. You're going to work on different projects, cutting across different industries, gaining hands-on practical experience. So these are things that you never get. Rather than you working on Titanic data sets from some other people, you're working with people's actual real life experience. So this, this is either you working with my personal experience or a data's personal experience or the experts that we have on the team or right, the facilitators using their personal experience to learn better or to understand certain concepts a lot better, okay? So you see these, these are the things that you get to work with, okay? And also, these are the computer vision projects you see. You can see them deployed several, several of them. You see them, you see? All of them deploying their own computer vision applications that they built to buy themselves, okay? So, internal analytics and detection, internal analytics post detection projects, internal analytics post detection. So, these are people that have gone to the training program and built their own projects, okay? And they've deployed it forward. So it always seems impossible until somebody else does it. And these are the people that have gone on ahead to get jobs with tech firms across the world. They are Nigerians, they're Africans. Some of them are working remotely from Nigeria, okay? And they're doing a fantastic job. How did they get this opportunity? First thing you need to start, okay? You need to start. And that's the reason why we have a community. That's why we have a platform to give you the, the step ahead that other people don't have. You're in Canada, you're in the US, let's just get that into the tech space. Fantastic, you're in the right place. Amy got a job as a CEO of a tech firm in UA Nigeria. Okay, the company is based off in Nigeria, and he got a job as the CEO of that particular organization. And this is what he wrote back to us. Okay, this is what he actually wrote back to us. He said he owns the analytics big time. Okay, let me just say that from the 2nd of January, 2024 to February 2nd, 2020, I've attended more interviews than I have in my entire career. You can literally see that just, just for people that might. And these are the benefits that you get. So one thing is a lot of people think that there are no jobs or they, are, they don't have experience to get a job. The key thing is you don't know how to rebrand yourself. And that's the reason why, that's what we know how to do. So you see, you see here, I owe to analytics big time, okay? All right? See, I owe to analytics big time. Let me say, let me also say that from January 2nd, 2024 to February 2nd, 2024, I have attended more interviews than I have in my entire life put together. I have turned out some, okay? I turned some down after I went to look at the profile online and saw that there are goals, those that I remind, all types of analytics, part of my testimony. So he wrote, like, he did a video also. So all that is provided for you, for you to drive, use that as your decision factor. So the key thing, the difference between you and Ini today is majorly just centered around the fact that he took that step to start, okay? He took the step to start the training program. And that's the same thing for all of them, okay? So got a job as a business data analyst, data scientist, business analyst. So tons of them getting jobs across the world, all right? And that's the beauty of you getting started as a, you get to start with, you know, with 
analytics. So you see Shadi also got a job as a data scientist without any prior experience. So all these, the links are there for you to listen to this girl, to, to all of them. Okay, you see that the links are there for you to listen to them. I also did the program, that's the data science program. It's actually landed me my first tech job right here in the UK. And I... So you'll see all the testimonials are there. You can go ahead to make a decision. So the key thing here is please take advantage of the discounts now. Now, not tomorrow, not next week. So be part of the first 20 people. So you're not sending a message early next week when we've closed registration based off the numbers that we've gotten. Okay, I am asking for the discount. Please take advantage of it Why the discount is available. All right. So on that note, guys, I'm going to call it a day. I think we've had a wonderful time. Okay. I've had a wonderful time. And I'm sure you have had a wonderful time yourself too. So thank you very much, guys. I had a wonderful time. I hope you learned something today. All right. I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed the learning experience. Okay. So thank you very much. Looking forward to having you in the main session. All right. And, um, you know, try it in analytics. Start today. Okay. Thank you very much again. And uh, have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Thanks so much for attending. Thanks for staying to the end. Really appreciate you guys. And uh, have a wonderful day ahead, everyone.